Manchester United 3, Arsenal 1. It was an epic game, could have gone either way. Arsenal brilliant for large parts, but Man United ruthless. Man United absolutely clinical. Marcus Rashford picks up a break and 3GA in this game. Bruno back to his very best and 85 million pound Anthony gets his Man United career off to a glowing, glowing start. Lots to delve into, disallowed goals. Poor or good refereeing. We want to hear from you on that. Arsenal, has the hype bubble dropped or is their level of performance today testament to how good they've been? They just got caught out. Arteta substitutes, those three big substitutions late on. What kind of impact did that have on the game as well? And we are going to talk Gabriel Jesus, one of the best centre-forward performances I think you'll see in the Premier League without scoring. Make sure you're smashing the like button. If we hit 1,500 likes while we're live, I'm going to gift out 50 free memberships to you today. Subscribe to the Football Terrace. Man United, four wins from four. Let's go. Manchester United come out on top and I'm going to blame Miguel straight away, especially for Anthony scoring. He tweeted as soon as Anthony was announcing the first team, Anthony starts and the meme, meme of shiver me timbers. That guy has got, I, I, I think he, I don't think he liked Arsenal the way he does that to them so regularly. It's unbelievable, but I want your super chats in. Javern will get them started. and We'll come to them very, very soon. But what a game of football we witnessed. I wish, I truly, truly wish that that Man United and Arsenal weren't playing. I wish it was two other teams and I could have enjoyed it as a spectacle. There were some standout performances. First of all, with Manchester United, Lissandro Martinez, top class again. Scott McTominay in the middle was an absolute machine for large parts of this game. Anthony with the debut goal. Not the best performance you'll ever see from him, but he got that debut goal and you saw how much it meant. Christian Eriksen dictating play for large parts of the game for Man United. And then Bruno Fernandes, heavily involved in the goals, getting his assist, the pass for Rashford set first, and Man United second was out of this world. And listen, Marcus Rashford has been maligned by myself and many other people. And in the last few games, he started scoring and he started creating. He's always better when Ronaldo comes on. He moves out to a wide position rather than being a centre forward. But Man United fans should be nothing but proud. Arsenal were the favourites. And Arsenal were the better team for large parts of that game as well. But United, they've done what they did in the last three games. Stood strong, worked hard, kept in shape, nullified opportunities. Made Arsenal second-guess themselves at times. When they should have been shooting, they didn't. Scuffing up opportunities really put them under pressure when it comes to that clinical clutch moment within the games. And I know Arsenal are going to walk away from this and they're going to feel frustrated. Arsenal are going to be annoyed. Arsenal are going to feel, they're going to look at this as, as what could have been. But Man United fans won't be worried about that. I'm certainly not worried about that as a United fan. But we want to talk to you. We want to speak to Gunas as well. What did you make of it? And I think to score three, I didn't see that in my wildest dreams. I didn't see us put in that many goals past Arsenal today. Um, I really didn't. Now, I want to go to some of your comments that are coming through here. I've got new cameras. I don't know if you can tell. And they're in the way of the monitor, so that's hard for me to see. But this one here says, get ready uh, for the excuses and downplaying, as what Ober says. Uh, four wins in a row for United. Damn, Rashford masterclass. Uh, Eric Ten Hag taught light bulb a footballing lesson, is what's been said here. Uh, this comment, uh, what did I say yesterday? 3-1, I told you, Terry, we will win. And you said we won't. What are you saying now, my G? Listen, I'm saying this. I'm happy. I didn't, I didn't see it coming. I thought a draw. But what I said in my video this morning is we needed to be fearful of Arsenal. We needed to be scared of Arsenal. We needed to, to know how dangerous they were. And the Man United players were. That's why they worked so hard. That's why they went into every tackle like it was their last. It's why they won second balls. It's why they worked tirelessly to stay in shape. And that's four games running, Man United have worked hard. And what happens when you work hard? Your qualities can shine through. They really, really can. Super Chat here says, um, I told you this week United will beat Arsenal, is what Gary the Lion says. Order restored. Thank you, United, is what G has got to say here. I think I've, have you unstarred? Oh, sorry, my fault. I've done something wrong. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, bring the banners out. Arteta out. Lee Gunner, proven right. Class from Bruno. But that sentence is almost oxymoronic. Because he says that Bruno doesn't do anything in games. Bruno, I can't wait to see Lee Gunner on Tuesday because Bruno just embarrassed him tonight. Embarrassed him. The irony, the, the biggest player in the Premier that looks like a rat has just destroyed the king rat. Um, we'll, be, we'll be having words on Tuesday, don't you worry. 
Um, Arsenal fan here. Ref was spot on. Poor tactics is what LG has got to say. Uh, Arsenal played well, but United hit us on the counter really well. We move is what J uh, James Adam has got to say here. Uh, ha, ha, ha. As a neutral, this makes me happy. Ronaldo changed the game. Equal lie. Liaz and Terry seething. Watch the American commentary and hear Gary Neville's influence saying Jesus paid well. Lol. Um, Arteta clueless spamming tactics is what the truth says here. Um, the real... The real, sorry, the first real team Arsenal played, pretenders, is what Tim B has got to say. Uh, Old Trafford at home is just a, is just being counter attack uh, sessions. Never a sustainable way of playing football. Call me salty, but this is not going to work against everyone, only the top teams. But, well, if, if, you, if you attack all the smaller teams and beat them, and then you counter the bigger teams and beat them, that's a pretty good technique. The most successful manager in Premier League football did that. Man United often play counter-attack against the big, brilliant Chelsea, brilliant Arsenal, brilliant Liverpool teams in title races, the brilliant Newcastle teams. Uh, Bashir says, congrats, Terry. Man United deserved the three points, but what about Malassia's trailing foot uh, that caught Saka after his shot? Is it a pen? Um, for me, no. Mal Saka landed on Malassia and then acted like it was a leg-breaking tackle. But yeah, Saka should have been booked for a dive in the game. But yeah, not a, not a penalty for me. I don't think anyone thought that was a penalty once I saw the replay. Uh, only North London team unbeaten, as Richarlison says, especially Jess and Collins cry more. Um, Arsenal, um, who are who we thought so are who we thought they are. They immediately crumble at the first sight of adversity. Can't play a bottom half team every single week. We're going to come back to some more of your super chats a little bit later in the show. I am joined today, though, in the in the studio. Uh, first of all, by Jess, how are you? I mean, I could be better, obviously. We didn't win the game and um, I'm pissed. Like I am pissed because I do think, um, although the comments are saying one thing, we did play really well and we got killed on the counter three times by Man United and they were just so, so clinical and we had so many opportunities and we didn't put them away. So yeah, I'm pissed because six games unbeaten would have been so much better. And I do think that the game was a lot closer than, Maybe people are making out to see him, but yeah, I mean, some guys in this on this team have got to learn how to take responsibility. I think Saka needed to step up a lot more. Like you're the one who needs to score. Like you're the one who needs to put the ball in the back of the net. He did that once, but he could have done it a couple more times. Like he had chances. Odegaard had chances. And so, yeah, like I'm feeling a little down about it because obviously it's Man United, it's your rivals and they're playing so well on the counter and I feel like we played well, but it just didn't come off today. Arteta subs killed us. Like, I think that's the main thing that a lot of people are going to talk about. Um, he didn't need to make those three subs at once. He could have just made one or two and um, it absolutely killed us because everybody was in disarray. But um, yeah, final thought on that would, would just be top of the table. That's why you still need to win your other games. Cause you're going to lose a game here, here, or there. And um, I still think what we saw overall was a good performance, but man, man, United were so clinical. Very true. I'm also joined by another Guna today back on the terrace. Adam Charles is here. What are you saying, mate? I'm good, man. We still kiss the badge. Uh, Cause it's, I'm proud of the performance, proud of the boys. I just think there was a bit of naivety from the players yeah. as well as Arteta. And I think it showed the three subs he made looked crazy at the time. Obviously what's happened is now gone on to, to justify it. So, so yeah, but it's fine. Listen, I, we were never meant to, to win the league. A lot of, a lot of crazy people in the room, especially saying that Arsenal are title contenders. I don't think we are. Um, goal is top four. So anything else is a bonus. And of course, with a young team, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to do what you need to do. Um, and I just, I think, I think we're just going through the motions at the moment. Um, and I think eventually we'll level out and we'll get to where we need to get to. But I think we can still be proud of the performance because it was very good. Uh, we played well in periods. We just need to do it consistently over 90 minutes and take our chances. And I think we get a different result. And yeah, yeah, hopefully. It comes and and, and, and I, I totally agree. Today could have gone either way. Arsenal weren't poor today, in my opinion, in terms of the play. Uh, I thought Odegaard individually had a stinker in terms of, he, he, there were times when he could have shot and he didn't. He had a, not an open goal, but a clear sight of goal mm. and it, his shot was going to go out for a throw in. Like he individually in those important moments, he kind of let you down a little bit today, but maybe there was just, 
a little bit of naivety with those subs at the end. The game, was it 2-1 when the subs were made? Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah we just got that right goal after. back. We, we'd gone 2-1 up. And you, I didn't feel like you needed to make a, a, a system change because you were dominating the game still. And the system change happened. And before you got used to it, United got that, that third goal when it kind of killed things off. So I think Arteta has really got to take responsibility, that part of it. And of course, some of the players not finishing your chances. But we are going to take calls, ladies and gentlemen. Keep smashing like buttons. We are going to come backstage. We've got uh, Brandon, KJ, uh, Jason, Young Samuel, Egal, and much more. So stay with the terrace. But I did want to ask yourselves, should there have been a goal disallowed in this game? Arsenal would have gone 1-0 up. This foul here that was deemed a foul by VAR and the referee when he had a second look. A knee and a, a knee in the thigh and a push in the back uh, led to a disallowed goal. What, what's your thoughts on that, Jay? I mean, we, we kind of talked about this off camera. Just because you make contact with a player and don't get the ball doesn't necessarily mean it's a foul. We saw in the box at the very end of the game that Enkedia went up for a ball and Maguire had contact on him and they didn't deem it a foul. It's it's weird that I mean we all know Erickson went down very easy. I thought that was it was clear that he just kind of tumbled to the ground and no way Odegaard pushed him that hard. So yeah, for me, like I just I didn't see really a foul. I saw contact. And if we're saying any sort of contact is a foul, like then it's not a contact sport. Erickson went down so, so easy in that. I think we should have got the goal. But you know, we we started to play a lot better after that as well. Like, I don't, I don't know. I feel like <sighs> I don't know. What what do you think, Adam? I mean, I feel like I'm, maybe I'm being salty, but I think... Jess, I, it's, it's supposed to I, I be a goal. You, you're not being salty, and I tell you what. What's the national food of um, of bloody Denmark? Because bacon. Bacon. So what's the national food of Nor Norway? Because there's clearly a big a big difference. Odegaard's obviously pushed um, Ericsson, and Ericsson's just been weak. Like, it's a bit of contact, but surely Ericsson could stay on his feet there. I've seen him ride challenges... Um, or worse challenges than that. So why is it that that soft one has all of a sudden pushed him on the floor? It's, it's, it's poor play from Ericsson. The ref's been conned. We've been... I, I don't even want to say we've been cheated. I don't think it was fair. Um, but anyway, we already, we've seen the stuff going yeah, around on social media we've today seen about stuff the, like that before. the conspiracies like, against Arsenal when it comes to referees. Well, look, we but, don't want to get but, there, but, yeah, but you are, But you are there because Arsenal fans laid this out before the ball was kicked that a referee would cost us today. Hmm. And the referee did make some mistakes. I think the referee made a lot of mistakes. I, I do think it was a foul because it's a knee in the side, a push in the back. It didn't touch the ball. You can't do that. And we saw, we saw a foul given. Uh, to your point, you made the Maguire example. But there was a foul given in an innocuous, innocuous point in the game where I want to say it was Varane went into the back of Jesus when he was near the halfway line um, of, of the pitch but the ball went out for a throw in nudged him in the back and the player fell down instead of giving a throw in it was given as a free kick so those things are always fouls for me equally though the, another mistake the ref made Gabriel Jesus falls over he does bang his head on the grass but grass is soft and he holds his head like he's he's got his skull fractured and lays on the floor motionless and Man United counter Yeah, but that's goes. different. He might you, have you, had Saka, you had Saka diving, no yellow card given. You had Gabriel Jesus in the lead up to Man United's opening goal, commit a, a bookable offence, wasn't booked. So the point I'm making is it may have been a mistake to disallow the goal, but there were multiple mistakes today that could have changed the course of the game. Defenders defend differently when they're on yellow cards early in matches. For me, like the big, I, I would say this to Arsenal fans, it's okay to focus on the disallowed goal as being an issue, but I'd focus more on Odegaard missing sitters and your manager making a silly decision when it comes to those late subs, that was more damning to the game because you had the opportunities after that point to we win did. it still. But I'm going to be honest, I don't see a lot of Arsenal fans just blaming the refs. I think a lot yeah. of Arsenal fans feel like we just didn't play good enough. So, you know, we you can talk about it and compartmentalize it and say like, okay, we're talking about the foul, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, like on socials, I'm looking at Arsenal fans and most of them are saying we yeah. just got beat. Yeah. Like, and that's and, and just that, and, and that's fair. And that's you know? fair. And that's, why, and that's why we're asking. And that's why we're going through it. But viewers, what is your take? What's your view? What is your opinion? Now, we've got some more super chats I want to do here. I don't want to ignore them. Uh, this one here says, Arsenal panel here are jokers now. Where are these clowns? Stop simping for Arsenal, Terry. Rashford was, was class. I'm happy for him. Uh, Jesus was invisible. invisible. Like, what game is he watching? What? That is such a bro, dead opinion. Specsavers are is is real, bro. It's a real company. Go there tomorrow. The thing but about it though is that like two teams, and this is why the, the game was so good, and why Terry's right about wanting to be a neutral in this is that you know the game was so back and forth, and in different 
parts. Like Man United were on top, Arsenal were on top. It was a very even game. So you can say that Rashford was brilliant, which he was. Bruno yeah. was brilliant, which he was. But also recognize that Arsenal had some really good performances. Hey. Martinelli, Jesus, they, they played well as well. So, yeah, it's like you don't – it's not always one or the other. And I think this is one of the best games of the season, yeah. I think so far in terms of quality and the way the game was back and forth. But yeah. just because you lose doesn't mean that every single player on your team played crap. Yeah, I, no. I, I agree. And, and on Marcus Rashford, the other point, point, yeah. point, point the, the other point being made, and I'm talking directly to the camera here. I'm someone who criticized Rashford. I'm someone that said he needed to be dropped. I'm someone that said that if he thought that he could use PSG just to get a new deal without improving on the pitch, he can leave. However, I went to six accounts when he scored his second goal. The hate on him and Bruno. Some of these people have said things like there's a special place in hell for these individuals. That's how bad they are. <laughs> I haven't seen them yet come out and say, I haven't even, they haven't even tweeted yet about the goals. Their team has just beaten the top of the league side, Arsenal, in a 3-1 win. And they haven't tweeted, thank you, well done, congrats to these players. Some Man United fans have such hate-filled agendas. It's unbelievable. Rashford today was his clinical best, 3GA. You know, he got an assistant. He assisted the goal in, in, in the last win that we got. He's, he scored a goal against Liverpool. I swear we got a, a, an assist in another game as well recently. And I'm, I'm maybe forgetting Leicester. which one it is. Le Leicester maybe. Yeah, and he, he's, he's not back to his, his best in terms of his overall play. Yeah. But he's getting there. And at the very least, if you've got an attacking player playing, I'd much rather Rashford's performance today than Odegaard. But Odegaard was great in 90% of his play. And then his final ball or shot was wrong. I, I would always take in, it the other way around. In their, so Rashford was class. In definitely. their defense, though, Terry, the, these six accounts who could have been tweeting or whatever, they may just be holding Rashford to his very lofty standards. No, no, so, and, and, but, it, but what, we don't fair. need to polarize things, though. It's very good, very good. That's why we want you back on the show, Adam Charles. You know. My view is this: you, I'm not saying Rashford's back to his best, but I can say well done on them goals. Yeah. When you when you when you're watching your team playing in the biggest game of the season so far, and you're winning, and you're tweeting about every other element of the game, but you're ignoring the players that you dislike playing well. Like I'm not a big fan of McTominay, but he. He looked like Casemiro today. Like, he looked well. like... Uh, <laughs> so what you do, you praise that one game. That doesn't mean I, I have to think he's the best midfielder in the world. Like, the polarization of football fans is crazy now. Uh, Ray here says, uh, sit down, Gooners. You taught, uh, you got taught by a good team. I said, paper, wait, Arsenal never, never said me. Ten Hag wants to win, is what Ray says here. Top of the league. Uh, Arsenal unlucky. Oli versus City counterattacks won it is what Kurdish Ball says. Um, really felt like the better team lost, um, is what Danny says there. I, I, look, I agree. I think Arsenal played the better football overall, but when it, football matches are won by one thing. And one, uh, did Arsenal fans celebrate like their FA Cup wins and their FA Cup semi-final wins when you won it with Arteta, when you were beating teams on the counter-attack? No, they it's, celebrated it's, hard. See, here's the thing, is there's always a difference between who deserved to win and who is the better team. It's fully fair for us to say Arsenal were the better team because we were. And if we play most teams like that, we'll win a lot, a lot, a lot of games. It, so exactly. you deserve to win. We were the better team. And, and I think that's fair. And that's why people shouldn't just write Arsenal off for this season after one defeat. But that's how this now, that's why Arsenal fans this morning were like, oh, there'll be a conspiracy. There'll be a reason we don't win outside of our control. It was to deflect, deflect from the clear banter that was going to come if you lost. Because you know, oh, first put the team and you lost. Yeah. But it's, it's Old Trafford. And Man United are looking better. And we never win there. Um, you can tell that Ten Hag's coaching is paying off. No one has really had a bad game in our last four matches, which is true. Uh, Maguire came on, though. And thought he was going to give away a goal straight away. <laughs> um, been telling you, Terry, I wish I was wrong, is what Per Hansen says. What's Per been telling you? That Arteta and Arsenal were like being overhyped, not good enough. Yeah. We're not, like, we're not good enough to win the league. Everyone knows We're that. definitely good enough to make top four, which yeah. is our goal for the season. We look... Really, really good. Like, I, I get it. I get it because it's like everybody before this group chats were saying we need to humble them. We need yeah. to humble them. They it, it needs to come back to balance. Well, it's not balanced because we still won five on the trot. But I get what you guys are saying because you guys need Arsenal to win to make you guys feel. I just don't get why Arsenal people don't like seeing Arsenal it. fans happy. Like, why can't we be but, happy? But, bro? It's, but by the way, if Man but United if Man United win their next game and yeah. there's suddenly five on the bounce people will then do, do the same thing to us. Because Man United and Arsenal had so many full storms in the past 10, 15, 20 years, that's why we're getting it. But look, I don't think Arsenal are going anywhere just because of this defeat. Um, C here says, a really good game from both sides. As a Chelsea fan, I'm jealous of how you play the game. VAR and refs called need retooling um, for its inconsistencies. See Havertz versus Tottenham. Um, Arsenal have no counter um, when plan B 
fails. Yeah. Fair, fair point being made there. Uh, Blaze says, uh, troops saying Arsenal were dominant and unlucky. Please tell me how many saves David De Gea made. Also, Arteta's arrogance cost them because of the stupid subs. I, I agree with your point there. De Gea wasn't being forced into making crazy saves. That, that was what was wrong with Arsenal. Say their final shot, their final ball just wasn't right. But the rest of the play was dominant. So I think that there's elements of, of truth in what troops and other Arsenal fans are saying. I, give them, I, I, I totally agree. And, uh, I'm not sure it's arrogance, though. He made yeah. a mistake. Like, <laughs> to say that somebody made three subs, like, arrogance would be not making subs at all, yeah. I feel like. Like, he tried something that didn't work. I know people envision Arteta as being arrogant, mm -hmm. but it's just because he's a new coach. Like, yeah, yeah. I, don't think that's right. I couldn't agree more. Look, we're going to come back. I know a lot of you have super chat. We're not going to ignore them. We will do the super chats later. We're still going to talk about more about Rashford. We're still going to speak more about Anthony. We're going to talk about Jesus and the subs in more detail. But let's go to some calls um, on the show next. Um, it's so hard to pick. Uh, I'm going to put... Um, Neeks, Neeks is going to come on Neeks first. Uh, Adam wants Neeks to come. I'm just going to make sure I've got the right backdrop on. I do. Uh, Neeks is coming on with us now to have his say. Um, welcome back to the show, mate. What are you saying? Adam! Adam! Yeah, I can't believe I had Adams in the studio. I said, what? Arsenal must be doing good. I have to check the league table. I don't really check the league table after five games. So something must have been cooking. Listen, oh, first I'm going to say, preface it, I didn't watch the second half. I've been busy today. Um, I'm out, obviously. You can see I'm dressed a bit differently. But um, So I didn't watch the second half. Yeah, You're going to get no tactical analysis from me right now. we done Arsenal over. They came to Old Trafford again. And you know what? You know what's sweeter about this one? Last season, a, a few of them thought they were going to beat us because we were real bad and we beat them. This time, I'm talking 90%. You lot thought you had it. You thought, yeah, five in a row. And at the worst, you get a draw and we're still unbeaten and we're going to show you the real... You're not the real deal. Pretenders as per usual. Now, I said, I don't know how the season's going to finish. I've got Arsenal in my top four. But you don't come to Old Trafford and think that we're Fulham and think that we're Leicester. Because that's the argument that was used. It was, well, you're saying that we haven't really played anyone, but look what this team did against that team. Look what this team did. No, now you're playing someone. Now you're playing a real manager. Now you're playing a real team. My five foot five centre back. You're playing a real team. Europa League Varan. You're playing a real team. Bruno, stat padding Fernandes, Marcus Trashford. Listen, it's Manchester United. That's a it's Manchester United we're talking about. It's, uh, all I say, isn't it? Arsenal, yeah, you played well, whatever well means. I don't know how you can lose 3 1 and play well because you're not used to do it all the time. When Wenger, you, well, no, I said, when Wenger used to come to Old Trafford um, against Fergie, you don't always played well. But we won because we said we, we're going to allow you to have the ball. We're going to let you do this and let you do that. But as the a Super Chat said earlier, how many saves did David De Gea actually make? He didn't that make mean, that many saves. That that Manchester United are not necessarily back, but you're, <laughs> you're, you're winning teams, Arsenal, so right? you're better. You're going to finish above us. Yeah, Man United are not back because until we're winning Premier Leagues and Champions Leagues, that's when we're above back. Us? No, no, we're not finishing above you lot. Uh, oh, well, we're, I, I, then stop, stop the conversation. Then stop the conversation. Wait, you want a game why, why, there. Why, why am I stopping the conversation? Game. You won a game. I know we won a game. And I'm and I'm yeah. I'm bloody happy that we bend you like over Old Trafford. If you're what? not willing to put your you're not willing to put your neck out there and say that you're gonna be better than Arsenal because you're out here talking about, well, we're we're a proper team. We're a proper team. Okay. Say it with your chest. No, no. Say I'm talking look, you, you won chess, chess, right? Chess, you won five in a row against Fulham, Leicester. Uh, you know the rest that's of the team. Crystal Palace. Couldn't do. That's no, something no, 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 that's no, this, but, but, but this is the point I'm making. When I say a proper team, I'm saying the first five you beat. You're supposed to win. You did well to win. Don't get me twisted. Don't get twisted. But you're supposed to win those games. If you lost those games, I would have been watching AFTV. I would have been chilling on the football terrace. Don't get it twisted. I'm saying those five games, eight Man United. And today you saw there's a level between Leicester, Palace, Fulham, and whoever else you beat that you're nobody getting gassed you about. Nobody thought you guys were the same as Leicester and Fulham. Bro, Didn't nobody that's say what, that? I, these group chats say you're in. Get out of them, bro. They're because not group chats. I've seen one person tweet it. He decided. Oh no, 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 no! It's not about one. It's not about one person tweet. It's not one it's person tweet. The argument. The argument. If you're not, the if argument you're not was, willing to put your neck out no, there no, no, and say no, that no, you're going to no. finish above us, we need to stop the conversation. I don't think we're going. I don't think we're going to beat. Finish above Liverpool. But when we beat them, I gave it to them. That, that it don't work like that. It don't work like that. Arsenal fans, when you beat those five teams, the argument people said, it's, "Yeah, but you're supposed to win." But then you say, "Oh, but Chelsea, 
uh, struggled against that team. Um, Man United struggled against that team. Liverpool struggled against that team. I'm saying what people were saying were correct. You only you play those five teams. Your first real test. Let's to get win twisted. More games than you your, lose. That's the point of the game. Your first real, your Doesn't first matter. real test. You faltered. Can we agree on that? Your first real test, you faltered. Because you went through a test. I can agree. We, a first real test. We didn't do what we we're supposed to do. Uh, you faltered. Use well, my no. words, Fulton. No, I'm not going to use that word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about letting people put words in my mouth. I'm not doing that. Nicks, my guy, listen, bro. Thanks for coming. Enjoy the rest of your day, bro. And we've got to get you in the studio again soon, my you. friend. Take care, bro. Uh, Nick's there, a uh, big Man United fan, giving us his thoughts and his feelings. Uh, super chat um, here. Uh, does Gabriel... Is that as in the defender? I think you're yeah. talking about. Not oh, it can't yeah. be Martinelli. It could be both. Um, no. I'm assuming he, he can't be the attacker because he, he scored a goal that got disallowed today. Does Gabriel at the back need dropping? No, he doesn't need. Who drop comes in. in instead? Yeah, we don't have any. Sandro yet. Martinez. <laughs> <laughs> he would again. If you had Martinez next to Saliba, it'd be six. From I've six, seen. I've seen. From five. I've seen primary six. school kids taller than. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't get beaten here again today, yeah, did he? In fairness, though, Jesus is about the same size. So, yeah, there, there we go. Uh, next caller, we're going to go to Aguna. Uh, a gal's coming on very soon, but on the show, Brandon's here. What are you saying, Brand? I'm absolutely livid, Terry. I really am. I really, really am. What's wrong? Uh, the amount of Arsenal accounts I've seen on social medias this week saying that that was going to be a walk in the park and, you know... Um, I've told them time and time again. It's Old Trafford. It's Manchester United. It was never going to be an easy game. But um, where do I start? Firstly, first half. First 10 minutes when Man United were on top and we were sat back, not really doing much. Whose decision was that? You know, you've got to go to Old Trafford and implement yourself in that game straight away. You know, all that sitting back, waiting, allowing Manchester United to come on to us. I think we found it difficult to get into the game. And then after that, right, and I'm not one to blame referees and VAR decisions or anything like that, but that is not a foul, Terry. I'm sorry, it really isn't. It really isn't. It's not a foul, mate. It's a contact sport, football. And for Ericsson to go down in the way that he did, off the minimal contact that he had, that's not a foul. It really is not a foul. So that goal for me should have stood. It was a great finish by Martinelli. But even when that setback happens, you know, when, when the goal gets disallowed. I don't think we did that great afterwards. I, I think, you know, don't get do you yourself want? carried away with all these pretty patterns and passing yes. stats and possession stats. What really matters is what happens in the final third. And we was not good enough today. We really wasn't. We had 16 shots on goal and three were on target. And if I, if I look at the three shots that were on target, only one of them was a, a meaningful save out of David De Gea. That's not good enough. We need to be better than that in the final third. Not only that, defensively, I've said it uh, before, I'll say it again. Sambi Lakonga and Granit Xhaka played very well last week. But this week, you see um, that they're not what we need in the midfield. It's too slow. It's too lethargic. It's, it's just not of that level. Um, and that's why I'm very disappointed that Arsenal did not dip into the transfer window because it's clear to see we needed that midfielder. We needed that winger. Bukayo Saka again today, you know, not, not good enough in the final third. I don't know what is up with him. Brandon, let me ask you a quick question. I remember back in the day, even after Arteta won the, the FA Cup, you were Arteta out. I want to yeah. know, are you trusting the process or do you still hate the process? I don't hate the process. I, I'm seeing progress within the process. Um, and I like where we're going as a team. And of course, yeah. you know, you, you're not going to win every single football match. But I'm just, I'm looking at the negatives today. And it's the same negatives yeah. that we've seen last season, the season before. And this is what bothers me, right? Because, again, we, 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 I, don't, I didn't really want to point out this with Arteta. And, you know, to make them substitutions the way that he did when we was only 2-1 down, we had the majority of the ball. I think that's very naive of him. And you can't even really call him, you know, a rookie manager anymore because he's he's been in the job for three plus years now, you know. But I look at our squad depth in particular and I'm not sure that's enough. I really am. I'm looking at the players that we're bringing off the bench and it's, I don't know. I really don't know. But Manchester United deserve three points today, 100%. 
No, I think you're right about that, that they deserve the three points. The one thing that I will push against on is just the idea that you're connecting this to the transfer window. I get that. Like, I was frustrated by the transfer window, but I don't necessarily see Xhaka and Sambi as, like, the main culprits in this. Like, we flowed through. We had the majority of the ball. We were building through them so easily. We were cutting through them so many times. The difference is that in the final third, in the decision-making, we had Odegaard, who wasn't on it. We had Saka that wouldn't shoot. And we just didn't finish our chances. So I, I'm having a hard time connecting this back to the transfer window when I actually don't think the midfield was that big of an issue because we weren't being dominated in midfield. You can't be getting dominated in midfield and be the, mo the, the more dominant force. You just you just can't. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. So the only I thing that I would say, though, Jess, is the two goals that Manchester United scored, the second and the third one, come from quick counter-attacks. And you could, like, it was Ericsson that played them balls. And there was nobody near him. No, no Sambi Laconga, no Xhaka. You know, yeah. nobody that's was near him the, whatsoever. That's the risk that you take in the way that we play. We play a very high line. And on most days, that doesn't happen. You don't play against a team with players like Rashford in it. You don't play against teams that have Ericsson in it. There's a reason why Manchester City lose to Spurs all the time. It's That's just, it's the name of the game. I just, Sambi is definitely not Thomas Partey. No. Nah. 100%. He's definitely not. But I also don't think that he was the main culprit. I'm really looking at the likes of Odegaard. I'm really looking at the likes of Gabriel. I think he made a mistake back there more than anybody. Those are the players that I'm looking at. But midfield, to me, I thought they did a good job against McTonamay, um, Erickson, and, and Bruno. Name, I still can't say his name. <laughs> Let's call him this, Scott. The, I hear Scott. that. Listen, I think it was, it was one of those games. I get your points, uh, Brand, and I get the disappointment, bro. We'll chat again soon, my friend. Uh, thanks for coming on and giving us your thoughts and your opinions. Uh, people, keep smashing like and share buttons and stay with the terrace. More super chats here. I don't want to ignore these. Um, please appreciate Ericsson um, after what he's been through. Yeah, I thought he was really, really good. I, yeah, I thought he, he, he was very, very good today. And he, he gives Man United the extra bit of control. You take that. What I've loved about these last four games is you make him be the, the dictator of play and you let Bruno, and I'm going to use the words the haters say, is let him play his hero balls. There was three or four times where he flicked the ball today, didn't quite come off. But then he puts a great, by the way, that pass to Rashford outside of his boot, pinpoint accuracy, brilliantly weighted. If a, it does that a lot, by the way, just go watch his assists and he's uh, the, got the chances he sets up, does it lots. If a certain other player, a little ginger Belgium. Don't that, do that. I was about to ask you, is he still better than KDB? No. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the point I'm making is like, it, it helps him. So back yeah, to Ericsson, yeah, yeah. It, Bruno can be Bruno when you've got a player like Ericsson. And that isn't like unlocking or oh, he, he takes it, it's just <laughs> That's a team sport. Do you know what I'm saying? It's a team sport. Simple as that. Um, uh, when you put, sorry, when you put Cole under, under pressure, it will either f turn into diamond or it will crumble. Um, I guess Arsenal decided to crumble under the pressure. Listen, Blue Wolf, Blue Dog, be quiet, man. <laughs> Blue Dog. Um, Jess playing, uh, playing, re playing really is not enough. You need to win. Playing really well is enough. You need yeah, to win. Man United deserve to win, but that doesn't mean that we didn't play well. That's why it was a good game. It's because both teams played really well. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. A uh, comment here says, congrats, Terry and United. No salt, but Arsenal played well and United were lucky. Uh, United f uh, fans have to accept the reality. Uh, they I weren't lucky. They weren't lucky. Yeah, I agree. I don't think lucky is the right word. I, I think we were clinical. We had very good chances. Arsenal had very good chances. We just took ours. Interestingly, when you got the equaliser, that's where Man United become more aggressive again. And we started pushing forward more. We, we, we moved our lineup. We become a bit too deep. So I wouldn't say lucky. I think it's the wrong word. But mm -hmm. Arsenal did play very well in my view. Um, they are backtracking now. Uh, did you say that here. backtrack? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. What, because we said United played well? Like... Okay, we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't. Mm. Why would Arsenal play a high line against a counter-attacking team like Man United? That's like shooting yourself in the foot and then being you, upset. Because you don't change your style of play for one team. We're only going to play a Manchester United or a Spurs four times a season, but most times against most teams, that will beat most teams. Pep doesn't change his system. Arteta's not going to change his system. That's not what you do. Yeah. And if we would have sat in, everybody would have said, why is Arsenal oh, sitting in? Oh, why are they sitting I, back? I, you know, so. and I agree. Uh, Josh here, who's a big Spurs fan, uh, says this is the first team Arsenal have played in the top half and they fouled. Controlling possession does not mean you played well. Ten Hag's tactics worked, is what Josh has got to say. King Cantona uh, says, I think it was a foul on Ericsson. 
uh, but don't think it was a clear and obvious error for VAR to overturn. Glad they did, though. Uh, the clear and obvious thing is sure. interesting. That's why what we need to hear is what the mm -hmm. referee gets. Because it, it, I'll tell you when it is clear and obvious. If they say to the ref, do you think Odegaard won the ball? And he goes, yeah, he got, he got the ball. So there was contact in winning the ball. It's fine. No, he didn't touch the ball, though. Therefore, the referee has not seen something. If he mm. thought the ball was won, then that, yeah. that's why we need to be, listen to what they're saying. I, I think this would end a lot of these debates if you heard what they were saying, because at least you'd understand the logic. But that's... They, they were speaking about a match of the day yesterday that they're going to get former players involved. Oh, they should. They should. They should. They have to do that. They have to definitely do. Uh, we're going to get Igal on to have his say next. If he's there, I don't see his camera on right now. He is. Igal's here with us, people. Shiver me timbers. Go Anthony is here. Yes. How you is. doing, Igal? I'm not doing so well. Honestly, I feel like I don't want to overreact and, and, and start going crazy. But at the same time, I'm looking at that performance and I'm saying to myself, we should have got something from this game. We should have left with something, at least something, because we had so many chances. We created so many opportunities for ourselves. We just aren't clinical. In the final third, we lacked that cutting edge. We lacked that final ball. And Odegaard just, I was saying shoot. At least if you're going to shoot, shoot on target. Like, you know what I mean? And then, and then when it comes to when it comes to the rest of the guys, I'm going through the I'm going through the team and I'm looking at it. Everyone's saying the midfield, the midfield. I agree with Jess. I don't think Samuel Lukonga was that big uh, was that big of a, a problem. I think the fact that we made our substitutions and we opened up the whole game for Manchester United, ended the game and gave you guys a third goal. Ericsson, I put my hand up. I thought before the game, if you play Ericsson, Bruno in that midfield and you don't have one of uh, one of these other guys with Casemiro, you guys were gonna lose. But you know what? Ericsson absolutely bust the game. Fair play to him. Rashford found form. And Anthony <laughs> Anthony scored in his debut. It was just, it was just, it, it was deja you vu. You do realize he, now, he only scored because you put that tweet out, right? <laughs> it was deja vu all over again. Every time we go to Manchester United, that we have a level of confidence, that we have a winning run, that we have something going on. The game is going in our favor. We, we, we can see to go on the, against the runner player. Now, let me get on to the referees. I personally, I'm going to say this. I'm personally going to just say this. When it comes down to these referees, we don't. We have to try our best to to work uh, to work and just win because these guys are not going to give us anything. They're not going to give us anything in our favor. I feel like if that was going against Arsenal, if that was if that was uh, you guys scored that goal and it was again, mm -hmm. they wouldn't even checked it. It would have just gone quick. It would have gone quick because how many moments? How many moments have I seen decisions or VR controversial VR decisions or any decision? Guess what? Arsenal can see the goal immediately. Go on. Uh, play but when Arsenal score it doesn't matter what it is they they look for the littlest thing to, to do it and it's not maybe it's just not maybe it's not just Arsenal because I'm seeing Chelsea's game I'm seeing uh, uh the Man City game this weekend the referees are just horrendous in general and you know what the uh, the cheek from those United fans you guys know exactly what you're doing Paul Tierney mm -hmm. he's one of our own you guys were singing during mm -hmm. the game you know why why? Every 50 50 call you guys were getting, everything was going on. Come on, you gal, speak on it, bro. So, why let's be real, bro? Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Why was Saka, why was Saka not booked for diving? Okay, I agree with you. Saka, he tripped over the ball. It wasn't he a dive, first of all. It was a trip over the ball. Harry, I, 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 one second, one second, one second. I was going to agree with you. I was going to ask my gal. Answer my questions. I just want my questions answered. Why You're wasn't Gabriel? Why wasn't Gabriel booked? Why wasn't Gabriel booked? Why wasn't Why wasn't your center halves booked? Why were Why were well, their man United? Okay. Why wasn't Scott McTominay well, booked in the first half when he pushed uh, a man in his back on uh, 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 in the more in the first uh, twenty minutes of the game? Someone in Harry, the, You're someone, clutching a nudge a a a a in the back is not a bookable offense. Okay, he didn't do it once. What about when he did a DDT? That's the first time he got booked. Yeah, and then he got booked. And he got booked. Come on. Hang on a minute, Gal. So you're talking about when he did get booked. My question to you is this. And this okay, is what, what about Varane? But you're playing what about his Amib? You're, you're, what you're doing is what about No, but Terry, that's what we're doing. What I'm saying to you is this. You said what it is. Hey, Gal. And if you let me speak and let me finish my sentence, okay. you would understand. Instead, you're shouting over me to okay. not hear the point. I understand that both sets of fans can pull on mistakes the referee made. Therefore, it isn't bias. At the very least, it's poor refereeing. But the way you try and make it sound like Paul Tierney was going out of his way to make Man United the winners today is crazy. Paul Tierney, no, no, no. 
didn't make Odegaard, didn't make Odegaard miss an open goal. Paul Tierney didn't make your manager make three substitution mistakes and change your shape. That cost you the game. Okay, one second. First, rewind. Did Bakayo Saka trip over the ball or did he dive, Terry? He dived. He that is a dive. Lie. That is a blatant lie. It's not, he tripped it, it over the football. And watch, dived. It again. It watch it again. Dived. Watch it again. He tripped over the football. Second of all, Terry, let's be real. And then, let's be okay, real. Let's be real. I'll, I'll concede that. I don't think he did, but let me concede that. But he asked for a penalty and didn't get touched by the player. That's did still simulation and cheating. Let him, let him, let him, let him ask for a penalty. At the end of the day, it, these these players are going to do what they do. I can't I can't do anything about that. What I'm going to tell you is though. Today's game, yes, there was poor refereeing. You guys won fair play. I'm not trying to take it away from Manchester United, but I'm just saying in there's moments where you gotta where you gotta look at things. You gotta be like, how is it that Saliba's getting getting a yellow with his first ever uh, even foul, and then you got Varane making two fouls, no yellow. You got my okay, man, you got my man, Sandro Martinez. Let's interject on the actual point. So Saliba's foul was a yellow card offense because he stopped a counter-attack. That is an instant, straight, yellow card. So okay. Varane, hang on, Varane committed fail, fouls, but none of them were bookable offences. And maybe if you accumulate three, four, five non-bookable offences, you end up getting booked, but they weren't bookable fouls. You can't compare the two The two fouls. They were completely different. You know that about football. My point is this. you could, I still think, by the way, you can't make, and we'll put it up on the screen, you can't try to make a tackle from behind have your knee smack into somebody's leg nah. and then push him in the back. Nah. That's a foul. Yeah. Terry, That's stop a foul. that, man. Stop That's it. A foul. Bro, Terry. if I do that on at goals on Wednesday, they're going to tell me to shut up, get up, and carry on playing. You're not playing professional is football. This, but, is but this I could, not, Terry. Look at me. <laughs> why, are, why are we babying? Why are we, why are we babying uh, professional footballers? They exactly. are not children. Egal, they, you're there, is, this is a contact sport. This is this has happened. This has happened against the run of play. And let's be honest. Let's be honest. How many times do you get do you genuinely see a, 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 that called back from in uh, on the other half? Let's be honest. Yes, you won the. Uh, yes, you guys won the game, and that didn't have the end result. It wasn't a close game at the end. You guys won it because Arteta made a mistake, and there's other mistakes that was made also. But refereeing was a factor to a certain degree. And I'm just I, I'm, I just pointed out everything. One second, I pointed yeah. out everything. I don't like the fact that we've had a 20 minutes of be on referees because I mm. pointed out a lot of things. I've given Manchester United credit. I don't want this just to be about the referees. And that's fine, Gal. But but you are the one that said. United fans are chanting the referee's name, and you know why. That is true. Just, you guys know what so, you're doing. So you, you know you what made you're an doing. Hang on, gal. Let me finish talking. You made an accusation that we're involved in this conspiracy. Therefore, the conversation has happened. If you'd have said, "I thought it was a bad decision, but that wasn't the reason we lost. It was more about our players missing chances and the, and, and our manager making a mistake," we wouldn't have gone into a discussion about it. You started that conversation. Question for you: um, There's a lot of people saying that Arsenal now have played a good team, first good team, and they've lost. Do you feel like this could burst the hype bubble or do you feel you'll be back to your best in the very next game, my friend? No, we see, we see, we see, we, we actually find out who we are. We, we, we lost this game, right? We find out who we are. We, we have two more, we have two more games before, before we play another top six team. Am I wrong? So in that case, we should now go and bounce back. We see how we bounce back from here. We see how much character we actually have because it could have gone both ways. It could have been if Manchester United lost today, they would have said, "Oh, let's see what Manchester United do." You know what? You guys won. Let's see if you uh, let's see uh, let's see what you guys do now. Also, listen, I hear that, my friend. Listen, Igal, always a pleasure to speak to you, my friend, uh, and we'll chat again soon. Thank you very, very much indeed. Um, is there a conspiracy against Arsenal? Do, do you believe that, Jess? On the fouls or just no, a refereeing conspiracy against Arsenal? No, I don't think there's a conspiracy. I think there's a lot of inconsistency. And then so when it happens to your team, you tend to look at it and say, well, I saw this the other week and it wasn't a foul. So why is it a foul now? That's the main issue is that it's inconsistencies. And really, nobody ever steps up for anybody when it's not their team. You know, it's only when it affects them, you know, then they, they want to care about it. So it's just about the inconsistencies. I don't think that there is a conspiracy theory. But there are things that you can look at in different games and say, why wasn't that called? I saw that last week. Why wasn't it called? You know, Ramsdale last week, I mean, he was in the goal mouth and, you know, they, Bubakar Kamara looked like he fouled him, but then Mendy's getting protected. Other goalkeepers are being protected. Oh. So it's just the inconsistencies and we shouldn't buy into them fully. Like, I do think that going into the conspiracy theories is a little deep. We lost because we deserve to lose. 
period, you know, but, um, yeah, I think that's just the inconsistencies. And unless we're going to always talk about it, like even when it maybe is even against our team, mm. then, then, you know, there's no real point in talking about it as far as I'm concerned, because nobody ever cares unless it affects their team. Yeah, that's it. No, I agree. And there was another tackle in the game. And I know initially we were like Bruno's play acting. And then we saw Samby, who's whose left foot got the ball, but he's right foot like she, it, it was it was shin height back of the clock. Yeah, well, that's, showing. that's just an accident. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. no, honestly, that was an accident. <laughs> but, but this is Samby wouldn't have a baby. But, and, I, and he didn't mean to do it. It was no intent. But that's a, a bookable offense and a free kick. And it wasn't even... It wasn't even seen. However, the irony is, if that would have that tackle would have led to a goal, they would have come back and gone, "Ah, oh, we missed that," and therefore overturned it. I do get the inconsistencies, and I called out yesterday. We saw a goal disallowed of Philip Coutinho as it should have stood because the protocols weren't followed, and you've got to call that out. But I don't believe there's a conspiracy because next week there'll be decisions that go against teams that benefit Arsenal. Mm. And if the if the if the if the if the narrative was from the FA, we have to damage Arsenal. Teams that are impacting Arsenal's. Um, Arsenal season would be getting all the favorable decisions and their fans don't feel they do. So yeah, the conspiracy side of it, I think is, is, is absolutely crazy. Uh, we're going to have Colleen on the show in a moment. Cameron's backstage, um, but KJ is now coming on uh, to give us these thoughts and feelings. What are you saying, KJ? Oh, I love beating Arsenal so much. I was stressed. I will admit as a United fan, I didn't think we could do it. I thought Arsenal were in better form. Their mentality was better, especially when they can see goals that come at you with, uh, with like a storm, which they did against us. And we held out. We conceded. Fair enough, because that goal was coming anyway. But what I was looking for is the mentality. What happens now when things don't go our way? And we stood up. And that is why I'm happening. You see my manager, Eric Ten Hag, bro. This flipping guy. I love this guy and his bold head, man. You see it. It's just, I just want to kiss it. People were cussing him. Why is McTominay playing? Oh, Rashford, why is he start? Why is he starting? Oh, Casemiro's on the bench. Listen to the manager's words. He said he needs to adapt. Casemiro needs to adapt. He's got a game plan. He knows what he's doing. Anthony came in because he already knows the plan that he has for this brother. So people need to stop getting on Ten Hag and let him do what he's doing. We're building slowly but slowly. We're not back. This win don't mean that we're going to go on a title charge. It means nothing. This win is just a good win that we needed to do. But let Ten Hag do his thing. He knows what he's doing. Because when Cas Casemiro came on, man looked rusty as hell. We almost conceded because of his bad touch. So, you know what I mean? Starting him would have been peak, bro. You know what I mean? So we've done what we need to do. I'm glad that we've done it. And we're going to talk about one guy. Not Anthony. Fair play. I love the guy already. Got his goal. Sembrary passion. But my guy... My child feeder, my MBE, my power minister, bro. Marcus Flipping Rashford. People love to get on this guy's back. Absolutely love it. And this ain't nothing to do with Arsenal fans. I'm not even talking about that. Yo, you can call him dead, Adam. I can hear you whispering, bro. Don't worry about that. <laughs> listen, listen. Man United fans love to get on his back. Love to hit on him because he's not what they want him to be. Rashi is Rashi. He is what he is. But what he is, is someone who can score goals when you've got space to run into. He ain't a number nine. He ain't a nine. He weren't great, but he got the assist, got I two goals. I do have a question. Just, just go, go on, great question. Go on. So yeah, I have a question. And I should have, I should have, I'm going to ask every single Man United fan mm. this because you guys are talking about our mentality. You thought our mentality would be better. Okay. We crumbled under the pressure. So where do you think we're going to finish? Because before this game, you thought we were a shoo-in for the top four okay. and we were really pushing for it. So since you've seen our, our mentality and it wasn't good enough in this one game, mm. For well, you, I'm does not, that erase all of the good, the good no, stuff I'm that we've done? About, no, I, but I want to know from from your perspective because you said you thought our mentality would be better. Yeah. Right. So you've yeah. seen a crack, and clearly, maybe we're crumbling. So where do you think we're going to finish now that you've seen us crumble? No, still, still top four. You guys. Still oh, okay, that. that's what I thought. Okay, yeah, good. I, I, listen, did you like know what I said? I just want to know that because people are being very disingenuous. They're no, basically you guys, no, saying honestly, that. They're erasing everything and saying, well, we, we failed our proper test, but then they still think we're going to finish in the top four. So what are you Yo, saying? Because if, if, if we failed the test, we're, get, we're not going to finish top four. Just want to make yeah, sure. No, I just want to be I, clear. I, I, I've clear. said, I've come in and said, I ain't here to chat about Arsenal because at the end of the day, you ain't my team. I don't flip me care. I'm just happy we beat you, man. You know what I mean? I'm happy your mm. fan base is in flipping turmoil right now. I'm seeing you guys seething. I love that. But that's all I care about for <laughs> Arsenal. For Man United, I was like, what is our test? 
and we passed our test. You know, what I mean? we passed the mentality test for today, and we have to go forward with that. And Marcus Rashford is someone that needs to build on that. Today, you weren't perfect. No, I mean, he gets an assist, he gets mate, two goals, and we need to build on that. And I on, said, sorry. sorry, Terry, I know you want to say something. I said, yeah. who's going to improve on the Ten Hag? People are like, oh, this player, that player, that player. I said Marcus Rashford, and people be like, nah, he's dead. Oh, he's not going to do nothing. Da, 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 da. When a player goes for two seasons, scores 20 plus goals and assists every, like for two seasons in a row, and then has a really bad season, why is the bad season saying that's it? Like he's done now. Like, that's that's his level. Surely that's a bit. He was really good today. He was good he today. Was he really, was really good. good. He was good today. Yeah. I mean, he needed that. Go on, Terry. No, I was about to say the same thing. My issue with Rashford, Rashford hasn't been that there's not been a player in there. I even said, I mean, Jess spoke about this on shows. Like, mm. I don't mean, you, you have that. Letting him go to Paris Saint-Germain, you've got to think, well, Paris Saint-Germain are willing to drop 60-plus million on him. That tells you there's a football player in there, especially if Campos thinks there's a player in there. It was all whether Rashford had the mentality to get back to working hard. And there was fears in the summer that he was just going to, I'm going to go Paris Saint-Germain. Oh, no, please don't. There's a new 300 grand a week contract. That, for me, isn't how we should be run as a football club. And if Rashford wasn't prepared to get back to his best before getting a new deal, there's a problem there. But we haven't seen that from him. What we've seen from Rashford, and it doesn't forgive the leaks last year and talking to the media about how hard he trains compared to other people. All of that I'm, I, I was frustrated with. But the one great thing about your football club and your players is that you love them and the club. And if they change their ways, you do forgive them. And that's the nature of it. They're like, they're not, they're not, as, they're not as important as your children, but it's the same mentality. Like you don't stay angry forever. Like they can, they, they can be forgiven. And Rashford is getting better. And when he moves back out permanently to a wide position, when Martial's fit and Ronaldo finds full fitness and he moves out wide, we are going to see a player that not everyone has to rate. But listen, if he starts bringing in 25 to 35 GA throughout the course of a season again, he is going to win us points. He is going to win us games and help try and get us back to where we want to be. Mm -hmm. Is he ever going to be a Ryan Giggs, a David Beckham, a Cristiano Ronaldo in these wide positions? No. Yeah. At best, he could probably get to the stat status of, of a yes. Lewis Nanny. But not being funny, Lewis Nanny was part of the most successful... And still a Premier League he, winner and Champions League Well, he is, right? but yeah. Lewis Nanny was also like was part of the most successful era in, in Fergie's history as a Man United manager. That kind of 06 through to like sort of 2013... That was our best best period. Three Champions League finals, four or five um, titles in that period of time, domestic trophies. The only, only thing he didn't win, I think, was the FA Cup. Like, that, for me, is not a bad return. So there is a player in Rashford, and I just want to see more Man United fans say well done to him because yeah. without his finishing today, we don't win. And and we need to, Man United fans in general, we need to get off our players' back and the managers' back. Like, those, okay, those first two games, unforgivable. It was horrible to watch. But Ten Hag knows what, knew what he was doing, and he's made the, the structural changes in the team. He's made the personal changes in the team. And it's working. But already, you see, when the player they don't like starts or gets game time, they want him to make a mistake. They want Maguire today to see the goal so they can complain about him. We need to stop doing that. We have an enemy. And it's not Arsenal. It's not Liverpool. It's our flipping owners, bro. And no, to I, this I, day, I, I will say Glazer's out. So we need to stop getting distracted by player agendas, focus on mm -hmm. the real issue, and be happy that our manager and our players are performing for now. We still have to do more, but yo, I'm happy with this win. Love being Arsenal. I can now do midnight vibes tonight. What do you think of the new cameras, see. KJ? What do you think of the new cameras? The view cameras are beautiful. I wonder who recommended you those lenses because he's you a did. genius. We, 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 we're struggling with a few settings on a few bits and pieces. We need your expertise in the studio soon, but uh, yeah. listen, bro, until next time, take care, bro. Uh, we'll Let's go, baby. Let's go, Rashi. Yeah. Let's there, do this. There we go. I'm just looking at Rashford's stats here. Last season in all comps. Oh, yeah. He got seven GA, five mm -hmm. goals, two assists, mm -hmm. already on five GA this season. So I just, I'm, honestly, this Man United loving is so cute. Um, but where, what, what happens to your season? What do you guys, where do you go? Because Liverpool don't look great. Uh, Arsenal, we know, obviously are going to fall away. We are not, and I repeat, not title contenders. Uh, Manchester City, you know, likely to win it. Chelsea don't look great either. So surely there's a bit of a gap for Manchester United with Casemiro, Cristiano Ronaldo, Rafael Varane, Eriksen, you know, bald-headed Ten Hag to, to, you know, slot in there, get that, get that title challenge, no? <laughs> title challenge is ridiculous. And I'm not doing that. Why, why is it ridiculous? Well, look, look, right now it feels ridiculous. Look, we win our next 10 games on the bounce keep keeping clean sheets, keep scoring more goals. Maybe we talk about it. But right now, 
Hmm. I still think teams are going to level out. Liverpool are going to get better. All right. Chelsea, <laughs> Terry, you don't even this. believe this. No, just, you don't I'm even like, believe what you're saying. I'm looking at the camera because you, if you didn't see the face, his motherfucker was pulling. But the point I'm making is Chelsea are still going to get better in mm. my view. Arsenal could have won today. So they're still going to be there or thereabouts. Liverpool will become better. Spurs have been brilliant so far this season. Man United have a... What I will say is this. Man United have a chance of making it into the top four. Mm -hmm. There's no shadow of a doubt. But I think for us to do it, not only do we need to be even better than we've been in the last four games, we have to hope that a couple of other contenders for it. So Liverpool need to play like this all season. Chelsea need to stay at this level all season. Because I think if all those teams raise their game and get to their consistent best... It, even if we are brilliant, we are still going to fall short slightly. That doesn't mean, though, it's an unsuccessful season and we haven't progressed because progression for Man United, winning more games, con scoring more goals, conceding less, and improving the way we play football. And the last four matches, the most imp impressive thing for me as a team has been our shape. The fact we've stayed in shape. Last year, when we some of those games against Liverpool and City, when we, you guys beat us at the end of the season, we had no shape. We pressed at the wrong times. And I was saying during the match, there were times today where one player would press, and then, and then he'd see his teammates aren't with him, so he'd drop back off again. Last season, we'd have the players pressing at the wrong times and leaving holes. People weren't getting back into the shape when, when, when turnovers happened, so it was easy to rip us apart. Some teams were... Last year, Norwich came to Man United. We beat them mm. for a Ronaldo hat-trick, but they ripped us apart for 90 minutes because nobody was in the correct positions. And there's so much more for us to do before I think United fans get carried away and start talking about top four title contender or anything along those lines. I'm certainly not doing that. I'm taking each game at a time, but I'm really impressed with the improvements, especially after those first few games. And, you know, the Glazers have been, have been forced into making changes. They've been forced into giving the manager more power. They were forced into spending more money. But they were going to give us our Naltovich and Rabio. We, <laughs> we ended up getting Anthony oh, yeah. and, 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 and um, Chrismo. And listen, the signings we've made also boost the squad. Rashford, Sancho, no, Anthony's here now. I need to up my game. McTominay has been his best, not only since McFred's been broken up, but of course he's got better leadership in the team, but McTominay's improved now that Casemiro's here. Why? Because he knows that if he doesn't play well, he's out of the team. And that is what you need at the football club. So it's four games. It's a very small sample size, but the improvements of Man United are, are clear to see, but I'm certainly not going to go as far as talking about battering teams, winning the league, even finishing top four yet, because who knows how we're going to react to our first uh, our first defeat? And I got I, I kind of get a gal's point around Arsenal. Uh, we'll see how we react. Your three your your, your rebuild's complete. You're three years into a rebuild. Ooh. Well, no, after three years, your rebuild's got to, is, is like is, is where it needs to be. You can mm. always improve your team. Pep Guardiola buys new players every year to improve. But like Arsenal shouldn't you shouldn't be thinking after you lose a game. I don't know how we're going to react because that tells me you don't have faith in your manager or your team. Like Arsenal will bounce back from this because. I think you've gone through enough adversity, but with United, we're 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 a month into our rebuild. Nah, like, don't do that, bro. We're at the start of a rebuild. No we're way. Not... Why? See the dif the How difference. Been, here? The difference, but but it's not just about the manager. It was also that we had literally one of the worst teams like yeah. I've ever seen in history. You guys have. You, you guys have always said it. If we just had a good manager, we could finish top four. That's what see you guys it. said last I season. It. So it's and not, you finished second on the Oli, no? That's not. That's not. I didn't though. It do, well, it doesn't matter. I don't well, say well, things. It, well, it, does, it does matter because I'm answering the question here. I have said all along when it comes to Man United, just having a good enough manager is not going to make us back to being a quality team. It's around the power that he's given, the consistent investment year after year after year, the way the club is run, player power being eradicated. What we, it, Just what we did with him being allowed to drop the captain, him being allowed to drop Cristiano Ronaldo, him not bringing Ronaldo on as the first sub when Anthony Martial was available. The fact that the Richard Arnold, via the manager, forced the club into giving us more money so that we ended up with Casemiro and not with Rabio. So we ended up with Anthony, not Arnautovic. Those are all very important elements behind the scenes. I've always stated a better manager will make us play better football. But we had Ralph's a better manager than uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And we got even worse because people stopped working hard. They stopped working hard because they threw the manager under the bus. And you will know that I've said that. I don't care what other Man United fans say online. I don't care what other content creators say online because these guys have been ignoring the Glazers and the way the club has been run every year. They, every time we sack a manager and bring a new guy in, they say, oh, that's all we need was a better manager. We'll go on to win the league. And we don't change how we operate and we end up in the same position again. So I've been proven right 
four times on the bounce. I don't need to defend myself anymore. Every Man United content creator that hasn't been full Glazer out knows I'm right. That's why they don't answer my DMs. That's why they've refused to come on the Glazer out co um, content that I want to make because I've told them I'm going to show them the clips if you say the Glazers aren't the problem. So... They, they, I, I don't care about this. I am right. And you can say, I, mean, I don't care what other United fans say because those Man United fans talk shit. Well, I mean, all I was asking was that, like, <laughs> if you guys have this <laughs> great team that you guys have always talked about and it was just about putting things together with a good manager, then surely you guys can at least say that you feel confident in making the top four because, no. No, I mean... You, that's poor, Terry, I'm interjecting man. because you're ignoring the point I made. Chelsea have got a world-class manager and spent loads of money. Liverpool and City are still... So Liverpool and City are already considered shoe in for the top four. Cool. So there's... Two places left between four teams. Look how good Spurs look at the moment in terms of getting those points out. You guys have been absolutely brilliant. Chelsea's Most of this squad at Chelsea won a Champions League only a year and a bit ago. They've spent nearly £300 million on players and they have a world-class manager that's been coaching them for 18 months. So when you put in all those factors, like, like I've said, we could get become a really good team this year, but it doesn't guarantee top four. You, you, you need one or two of those teams, in my opinion, this season to drop off. Now, if we get better, win more see less goals, score more. We go into next season, we invest another 150 million pounds. My opinion will be different. But right now, let's not, we can try and twist it all we want. Man United are a month into their rebuild. You're not, Chelsea are not, nobody else is. We're at the start. So we shouldn't have, we, there's no way we should have the same pressure on us that teams that are, that are 18 months three years, five years, seven years. It's not in, about having this. It's not about having the same pressure. It's about having pressure like yeah. at all. Like I yeah. do think that like you guys are acting like you have so much further to go mm. than other teams that started their rebuild. You literally just needed a good manager and your players are starting to click really fast. I think you guys should have expectations of really trying to get into that top four because you, you've always had a top four team. That's all I'm really saying. Yeah, well, I would even say you should have loftier expectations and, 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 than and that. Maybe, and maybe we will, but at the start of the season, most mo uh, where, where did you predict United finishing when you predicted the season beginning? I don't even know. You said, I think you said sixth. So the point is, you, you're saying we, we've always had a top four team, but you predicted us coming sixth. Yeah, but you guys have always said. But the, see, that's the but thing I, is, I, Man United... I, I understand that, Jay, but I'm asking, give us your opinion. Forget what some random that no one listens to online tweeted. What do you think? Where do you think Man United should finish? I think Man United should feel like they should be pushing no, for the top four. where do you four. think Man United should finish? Your opinion. It doesn't matter what I think. Of course, that's what you're here for, to give your opinions. No, I'm trying to get it out of you guys. Where do you well, think you're going to finish? Opinion. And now I'm asking you back. But don't you think that you guys should have bigger expectations? Not, based... not, not year one, not with where we've been. Not with this, our this year one stuff is very and like, no, it's very you precarious. Sat on, you sat on here countless times on the football terrace, defending your manager, Arteta, defending your club, because it was the beginning of a rebuild. We're still finding our feet. It's a new system. It's a new style. It's going to take time. And, and we now... didn't have Casemiro. We didn't have Ronaldo. You had we didn't Barty. have Rashford. You had Thomas oh, Barty. What, what else did we have? So you didn't, <laughs> have, so you didn't have. So you didn't have good players. You had two, three years ago. You had Champions League Varane. You had the the most expensive English defender in history in Maguire. You, you know, it's oh, like wow. you guys. Are, you're, it. you're trying to ladies act like your team was ladies, so ladies crap. And, ladies, ladies, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you see the toxicity, the bitterness oh, there come on, coming through. They, what this saying, this it's, year what, one what, stuff what seeing, is so weird. It's not year one. It's stuff. it's one month in. It's, it's not this year one stuff. It's okay weird. if we finish. It's exactly. It's exactly. It didn't say it's okay where we finish. I said it's about how we're playing and the trajectory that we're going going in so please don't misquote me on my own channel because you know that people don't get to lie about me on <laughs> but that isn't what i said <laughs> uh, we're going to speak to colleen then we're going to do some super chats people colleen what are you saying that hurt okay. that hurt listen i guess we'll just have to settle for a regular Premier league trophy rather than a gold one it happens i guess <laughs> yes, <laughs> what's gonna happen I, I just don't know no honestly it was a tip, you know what, fair play to United because that was like a typical United performance against a top six, like a, not even a top six, like a top club. They will soak up the pressure and then get you on the counter-attack. And I'm just sick of it. I'm actually a bit sick of it. Too. I'm sick of Old Trafford, sick of looking at yours. I'm seeing Anthony having a little fucking jig online and all this. Oh, it's terrible. Absolutely terrible. But from an Arsenal perspective, we listen, we played well. But at the end of the day, we didn't score. We scored one goal. We had three shots on target out of 16. I think this is where the real test comes in. It's not about us winning 10, 20 games in a row. It's about when that 
adversity comes when we lose a game or draw a game and drop points, are we going to be able to pick ourselves up in the next game and just have it as a blip, if you like? But there is that kind of old school rivalry between Arsenal and United. So these things hurt. Like I had to take it like 10 minutes before I jumped on the link to see I needed some Zen. Just lots of yap, yap, yap going on online and from all of you lot, to be honest with you. It's, yep. uh, it's a hard pill to swallow because, as you've said, Terry, you're in month one. Year one, month one. So, mm, yeah. as, as you say. Mm. Yeah. I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you, Mikel Arteta substitutions, did you think they were right at the time when you saw the, the sort of change? Did you think ah, this, this could lead to issues or was it just a bit of bad luck? Hindsight's twenty twenty. So, obviously, at that point, it's one all, I believe. And he's probably thinking, let's just go for it. I think it's... I can say it's naive because I've now we've, we've lost the game. I don't know. In that moment, I did feel like oh, it's it's a bit risky. Um, I, he's not going to change the way he plays. I think he does that every single game. Even if he knew that was going to be the outcome, he still does that. It's similar to what Jess was saying. He's going to stick with his philosophy. I think it was a bit naive. I just don't see. I just don't know why we had to go that gung ho. Only um, just have the two centre backs on the halfway line, if you like. Um, I would have liked to have seen Stan be stayed on. I think we could have done it with two subs. He didn't need to go for three, but if it had worked, we'd be having a different conversation, being like, yeah, he's been so reactive, um, reactive and proactive. So it could have just be a story of it's one of those ones where it just didn't work out in this game. But if it works out in the next, I don't know, in the next games against the top six, then it's okay. We need to see more around Arteta and Arsenal to see whether. Colleen, you know why he did it though? is because with about 20 minutes to go against, um, I think it was Fulham, when we went down a goal, he we had 20 minutes left, and he started taking players off, and he threw Enkedia on, you know, and he went gun ho and he got it that time. Mm-hmm. And it was, Fulham, Robert, it was like, a, exactly, it was like an early, you know, it was, it, was, it was early. It was earlier than I've ever seen him really react, and he got the three points off of the back of it. This time, mm-hmm. he really needed to wait and be a little bit more relaxed. And he did, he panicked, but you know, sometimes you get rewarded for doing those things and sometimes you, you don't. And Man United really exploited us, but yeah, like he, he'll probably look at that and say, you know, I should have waited a little bit longer and at least kept our shape. Cause I didn't really understand why he. But the other argument yeah. is that we should never have been in that. There's always so many different arguments you could take. We should never, you could say that we should never have been in that position to begin with simply because of how we played up until that point. We know yeah. we, should have been a goal. we should have already been ahead. We were the better side, but at the end of the day, goals were new football matches and that didn't turn out for Arsenal. So, listen, it's Everton next and we're still top of the league. And I'll save uh, Tell and all you other Salt United fans and all you Tottenham fans are in my DMs right now. I'll save you a spot at the parade. Don't worry. Dan is mm-hmm. uh, Dan in five. You're welcome to come. Come see a Prem trophy. It's fine. I just want, want to clarify. I have not been in Colleen's DMs. That is... Uh, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, listen, uh, Carl, always a pleasure to speak. And listen, as I've already said on the show, I, I haven't taken any shots at Arsenal today. I think you played well uh, for large parts of the game. You, you were better. I am. It's funny, I am seeing online like a lot of blue ticks and a lot of ex-pros like, still like praising Arsenal and they're sticking it to United at the end. And it's, it's what I like about today's victory. It's still nice to know that even though it's the worst United team since World War II, we still get under everybody's skin because we are the biggest. Um, yep. Carl, yep. Yep. Always a pleasure to speak. Speak again, get, get, See you again soon. Take care. All the best. Thank you. Uh, we have a super chat here. So many super chats to go for. I'm going to come to Cam and get more of the guys backstage. I promise you. I've just It's so mad this show today. Uh, Terry, expectations change um, along the season. Terry, the United squad is better than Arsenal, uh, Chelsea. Sorry, Spurs and Arsenal. Chelsea and Liverpool don't look ready to challenge City. All top six teams expect City um, are in the top four race. So I agree with you that expectations change. And like I said, if our, if we get really good run of results, if we continue to be this strong, if other people, as per your tweet, don't improve from where they are now, of course my expectations will change. But I'm not going to change my expectations because of four wins on the bounce. By the way, we didn't win four games on the bounce last season. So that's already a very good omen for us. So of course it's a fluid thing where you think to ex- expect to be. Arsenal fans, had no, a lot of them didn't have hope of top four last season. Going into the last five, six games, they believed they were going to do it. So, of course, I believe it can change. And if Liverpool and Chelsea stay at the level they're at now, 
then and we continue to play like this, then I think we'll finish in front of them. But that is all if, buts and maybes. That's, that's me giving an opinion based on, on information I don't know. What I do know is that Chelsea have got the ability to be much more consistent than this. Liverpool have had times before where they've struggled on the cop, but then ended up being one of the best teams in the world again. So to write them off and just to assume that Man United, who have had some good periods under Moyes, LVG, Jose and Oli, that we're 100% back now because we've won, the, won these four games, History doesn't dictate that that's true. We may have better squads on paper, but we had a better squad on paper last year, a better squad on paper the year before, the year before, the year before. And it doesn't always translate because how things run behind the scenes at Man United is every bit as important as the personnel that we have. Um, I've been right about that every single time. Um, if you use uh, Harry Maguire um, as the reason uh, why we will finish in the top four, I can't take your argument seriously. I said, yes, it's true. Um, Man United get dominated and win. The football gods are sleeping. Congrats to Man United. Watch out for Vieira. He's a baller. He looked good when he came Vieira on. Vieira did look really good, he did, yeah. Didn't he? he looked very, very good indeed when he came on the pitch. Uh, Tuchel isn't a world-class manager, Terry. He's Agree. Agree. Yeah. Because Chelsea won that Champions League by a fluke. Everyone knows it. <laughs> exactly. Everyone knows it. Anyway. <laughs> um... I mean, Terry, I mean it sincerely. Your hair looks great. Cheers for the United Show Bigot. it, show it. The hair show is looking good. The hair is Shit. looking good. Bruv, that is oh thick. My God. Look at that. It's still got a little bit more thickening to do at the back. But when you consider that I was properly slap head Phil Mitchell bald. God damn. This hair transplant is, is honestly, it is great. When I actually start to lose weight, I, I shouldn't eat double bacon cheeseburger. Five guys. It doesn't matter, kids. bro. It doesn't matter. But yeah, the hair's looking good. The DMs are filling up. That's not, that's not true. It's not true. They're not. I promise you. But uh Thank you. <laughs> uh, Terry said United are scary. Listen, Man United won today because we, we tr because we treated Arsenal with absolute respect because they are a scary team. If you're a Man United fan and you're, and you're telling me you were watching that game and not going, ah, when they were attacking, I think you're chatting a little bit of poo-poo, uh, personally. Uh, City and Spurs are the only unbeaten sides. Um, they meet each other next week. <gasps> Could still end up. What if they draw? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jesse's right. VAR and refs in this country need to be overhauled. Yeah, drama is entertaining, but when it happens to you, the world sucks. That's right. Uh, a foul is a foul that the F you on. Yeah, listen, I, I do think it was a foul. It was, the goal was rightfully disallowed, and I'll stand by that statement. Uh, Nav here says, wait until Arsenal play Chelsea, Liverpool, City, Spurs. We'll see how loud they are then. People have been saying this, uh, and once again, they ignore it. You think it's BS. Arsenal is Ars Arsenal this, Arsenal that. Nah, bruv, is what Nav says. Mm. Um, Arsenal fans need to stop being salty. It's a foul every day of the week. You guys would, uh, would have said it yeah. was a foul if it was called on an Arsenal I, I definitely wouldn't, Mr. Augustus. I certainly would not. But <laughs> thanks. Thanks anyway. <laughs> Um, mark my words, Arsenal will get shook now. Cheers. Another one here from Nav. He says, Jess, this is the thing. How how many times you lot say top of the league uh, then get proven right um, by other fan bases? I am phased by Arsenal. No, because I know really will strike last 11 run still bottle. I think he's saying you're going to bottle it still. I think uh, maybe it's my dyslexia. I'm, I'm, he's well, saying you're going to bottle it. When's the last time we've actually been top of the league though? Like you're saying, you've seen it so many times. Like I get what people are trying to say, but like, if you're going to sit there and try to tell me that you don't see a difference in this team, that one loss against Man United, a place that we never beat them at, like we just have such bad luck there, that that all of a sudden means that the, the season is over and just pack up and whatever, then don't watch. Then don't watch. If you have like no faith that anything is going to change and you don't have and you don't think anything has changed at all from what you've seen, then just don't watch. But watch the terrace, though. Make sure that you're doesn't watching make the sense terrace. to me. Make sure you're watching TFT Nav. We love now watch you. the terrace, but don't don't watch yeah, Arsenal. Don't watch then Arsenal. there's no point in watching it if you think you know the script every time. Yes, straight question. Where will Arsenal finish this year? Oh, in the top four. With chest. Yeah, with chest. Something that other people won't do. Like it was one Woo! game. <laughs> It's a thing. I'm not saying we can't finish top four. I'm sticking to my prediction of top seven. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. You seven. idiot. I said seven. Get out of here, man. For that for now. Yeah, I'm sticking for that for now. Uh, next on the show, Cameron's here, all the way from Canada. My guy. And I Cameron. So everybody, I know it's taken a while today, but it's a big, big show. Canadian Cam, what are you saying, bro? There he is. There's our Rashi. Let's go. 
Oh man, all right. So I got a few things. Um Colleen, I wish I was on before because she said before this two words coming into this game, light work. Mm-hmm. I mean, Arsenal fans did a lot of them did it to themselves. I don't know why people were thinking it just you don't win at Old Trafford. It doesn't happen. Um, it just doesn't happen. I think Arsenal played well today. First off, I'm not going to come in here and say like we thrashed Arsenal. I think we played. I think I think what we saw today was um, something interesting when it comes to the managers. Arteta still has a lot to prove, and I get what Jess was saying, where it's like, oh, they play that way against everybody. Well, guess what? You can't play that way against some of these top six teams. And until he learns that, you're going to be in the situation more times than not, right? To be in the top four this year, which I think they should finish top four. You're not going to be able to play that super high line against all these top against the top six teams. You're not going to be able to saying like, oh, we don't switch it up because that's how you play. That's naive. That's the definition of naivety. That like that to me is like you coming in here thinking you can play your style of football when and thinking Air Ten Hogs not going to know what that style of football is. Doesn't make sense to me. Right. Like he's that good of a manager where he came in and he was like, well, I know they're going to do this. So I'm definitely not going to drop Rashford. Play him up top. What happens? Two goals and assists basically tore you to shreds. You have Erickson playing deep. People were saying, a gal, oh, you got to play Casemiro. Like, you got to stop our midfield. No, no, why? Because Eric Ten Hag knew exactly how they were going to play. I'm going to speak about the manager a bunch because, honestly, we were backstage the other day, Taryn, I was saying, this year we're really going to see something interesting when it comes to this manager. And, like, our structure is trash. It's been the same way for years where we bring in a manager, we kind of give them a bunch of control, and we hope to God it works. This might be the first time with Murtaugh, who's kind of a football man, um, who's been around a long time, these guys who understood that, listen, we've got to put all the chips in into this manager. We've got to listen to everything he says. There's an article on the the Athletic right now that spoke about everything that's been going on behind the scenes. And it's basically been all, all Air Ten Hag. People who are thrashing the letting go of Jimmy Garner and keeping Scott McTominay, that was Air Ten Hag's decision. And we're seeing a different, instead of people saying, yo, wait till a great manager comes in and Bruno's going to get dropped because he's not going to rate him all Scott, Rashford, or a great manager is going to come in and be like, wait a second, Bruno's actually really good if I coach him right. Like, we're seeing what Bruno's all about. We don't, just because he's not getting the 20, 30 goal GA that he was getting before under Ali with the freestyle football doesn't mean he's not going to be a great player. Anybody who watches him for Portugal, he doesn't play the same way. So what we're seeing now is a manager who hopefully, and, and I'm sorry, I got a question when, when people were chirping you, Terry, saying, oh, it's one month in. How many players did Arsenal buy for the first team this year? I got a question for that, like for you guys. How many how many players did Arsenal buy for the first team? Four. For your first team, not many. Really. For the first team, four. Yeah, we bought we bought Vieira, the backup goalkeeper. That's a first team player. No, okay, sorry for your starting eleven. My bad. Starting, starting eleven. Starting eleven. Yeah, you're starting eleven. My bad. You're starting eleven. My bad. I said it wrong. Zinchenko and Jesus. Oh, cool. Jesus. How many did how many did United buy? I don't know, Casemiro, Anthony, 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 Anthony yeah. Sandra Martinez. All right, in our first right, month, full, we're, we're basically full rebuild in one month. You guys are three years in. Three years, you are fully into your – you don't – because you didn't have to rebuild. You only had to buy two players for your first, for your, for right. your first 11. That's right. it. Right. We bought five. Five. Five players for our first 11. Oh, oh, mm, mm, okay. Wait, what is he even trying I, to say I, there? I've, honestly, I think this point is, is garbage. Right, I you know what? Like, we're, not, we're not disputing our rebuild. We know that where we need to finish, and we're definitive about it. Most Arsenal fans feel like they need to finish in the top four. Like... But the thing is, is you guys are trying to make it seem like you guys are destitute, like you guys didn't have anything, Rather. and you guys are starting from Casim- the very, Casimiro. very beginning. Casimiro. 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 If you didn't, if you didn't on, lose to Brent, hang on. But when it comes to the season previews, when it comes to speaking about us in the summer, you haven't been sitting there saying United are, are, are got, still have got a brilliant squad. They only need a couple of players. They don't need a rebuild. You, 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 you know you, what the shade about this, that is? You, have, you know what? Hang on, let me finish. You have specifically sat there yourself and said how bad we are, how we need a rebuild. Now, other Arsenal fans, this isn't at you. Other Arsenal fans have said, you've got to copy what Arsenal done. You've got to rebuild from the beginning. It's going to take two or three years. What's happening right now is one, there's, there's obviously hurt because you've lost the game today. But people are worried that maybe, just maybe, it isn't going to take us as long as it's taken Mikel Arteta to get a team to this point. So they're trying to they're trying to discredit the the, the, the rebuild so far. They're trying to say, oh, you should be win- you should be challenging for the league title already. It's ridiculous. Literally a few weeks ago, we we're one of the worst teams in the history of the Premier League. Now suddenly that we we have we are under we are under 
cooking our team and not respecting it enough by saying we might make top. Yeah, four. that's because you're that talking to people no, that don't were, know. It was one of the. It was one of the, it was one of the worst critical. Man United oh, teams that you guys have ever had. That's not the worst team in the in Premier League history and all this kind of stuff. You're talking about no, in terms I, of just okay, Man United. Because even if. But no, let, let, let me rephrase. Okay, rephrase the worst it. Man United team in Premier League history. Okay, but even if it's the worst Man United team in history, it doesn't mean you guys don't have five, six world class players in your team. That's what I'm saying. Like Arsenal don't have any world class mm -hmm. players on their team. That's what you guys keep saying. And on top of that, hold on really quick. And on top of that, before the season started, even after we bought Jesus and Zinchenko, people did not have us in the top four. They had mm -hmm. us fi finishing mid table again. You know, they're going to bottle again six. So it, it goes both ways. But that, but that isn't. But that is. Irrelevant. Except Jacka, Jacka. That's irrelevant to my point. You said we were going to come like six. So you, you, you're now like going, are you changing your mind? Are you, do you think Man United are a much better team? Do you think we're making top four now? Well, I didn't say six after, I didn't. I said that before the transfer window. That's for sure. Okay, so right now, where do you think Man United are finishing? How good do you think Man United are? I still think you guys will finish somewhere around like this. So mm. you think we're fifth? And you're moaning that Man United fans are not predicting that we're going to come higher when you, the, don't, when the you, reason don't, when you why, don't agree with that. No, but, no, it's not because the reason why I'm saying that is because it's not based on what I think. It's based on what Man United fans are saying that I'm seeing in the chat right now that you guys are going to come above us. You guys are going to challenge for the title and that you guys that. are a better team. Nobody's you guys have world class that. players. You guys are going to slap us. So that's what I'm saying. And like mm. you keep saying, well, what do you think? I'm saying, well, what do you think? Well, because I, you guys I, are... And I'm saying... And not just you. All the Man United fans in here. <laughs> the reason that I'm asking these questions of you is because I've told you what I think, that we have a chance if we keep improving. Mm -hmm. And then you and then you threw what other fans are saying at me, the squad that we already had, that we don't need a full rebuild or not one month in because we already, well, let have, me, let me we just, already have these players. No, but, and then I'm saying, well, what is your opinion? Well, I'm asking you. I give you my opinion and you don't accept but, it. Okay, so let me just rephrase this. You're saying it's about me, it's about me, it's about me. I'm saying this basically out to Man United fans in general. The ones that I'm say seeing that are coming on here and don't have enough chest to say that they're going to make it into the top four, they're not going to do this, they're not going to do that, when they still speak about their team as if it's the old United. It's only been a couple of but games. So has sorry. it only been a couple of games right, well, or no, not? No Man no, United no. fan, Cam, KJ, Neeks, no one has come on here saying that we're the old Man United. Who has come on yeah. here and said that? I'm Neeks. seeing it. Neeks, Neeks did I'm it. I'm seeing it. Said that. Neeks did it. Well, Neeks. No, no, no. Neeks did it, bro. Neeks. And he's not even. Neeks, Neeks did it. I heard you, you my own two ears, bro. You guys said you were a Neeks proper team. That. that this and that. He but was, yeah, he was digging at you. Um, Cameron, uh, listen, mate. I really, I know you have to wait a long what time. Thing? Can I say Dig one on. thing? One thing, real quick. One thing, one thing, real quick. Because you're saying no one's saying it with chess. I've said it already. I do believe we're going to challenge for top four. I'm not. I'm as long once the window closed, because that's when I was saying I was going to make my decisions. We're gonna finish in the top four. Most likely, that's where I'm sitting, like sitting on. I'm not sitting on the fence. We're gonna finish in that top four because I don't think Chelsea will finish in the top four. I said that, and I can see Spurs or Arsenal bottling it because that's what y'all do. Straight up, the best thing that could have happened to us was starting the season 0-2, so we got the players we needed in, we and Liverpool saving us from spending 85 million on Darwin Nunes. I'm not saying he's a bad player, but it wasn't what we needed. Rashford well, at least thank you for having some chess. That's all I'm huh? saying. In it. That's all I'm saying right now. There's the chest. There's the chest. And I'm and I'll, I'll come back later on. But peace. Cam, bro. Listen, Cam, appreciate See you later, it, my bro. guy. Thank you. Well, I will I will also change my 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 prediction. Nah. I predicted Man United coming seventh. I'm now gonna say six. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will predict Man United coming higher if if you admit that we're better than you. Uh yeah, you are. We're better than Arsenal. Man United are better than Arsenal. No, I don't think they're better than us. Well, I think you have a, you have a better, better than Liverpool. Arsenal, for sure. Are we better than Liverpool? I, I personally don't think so. Are we better than City? I don't think so. Jay? Better than City? Better than Liverpool? Mm -mm. Better than Chelsea? That one, that one, that one's up yeah. for debate. I think that's the one that's Chelsea up for grabs there. Washed, so, like, yeah. maybe Chelsea, but are we better than Tottenham right now? No. So, we're not better than Tottenham. We're not better than Arsenal. We might be better than Chelsea, but we're not better than Liverpool or City. But we should have chess that Man United are going to come in the top four. Because of it what you guys are saying. No, no, sense. because it makes see, no sense. It is crazy. We're going to do some more of these super chats, people, on, on the show. He's right acting now. like he doesn't hear what I'm saying. We've got, we've got to go to these super chats. Exactly. I'm sure you do. I'm no sure worry, you do. I'm sure you we do. You do. The because, fans do as well. Yeah, like everybody knows. Done. You got done. I didn't get done. She got lit. I got lit. Just got smashed. How did she get done? Smash, bro. 
because he's trying to make it his own art. You don't think so. Well, Man United fans think so. You guys think you're better than us, but you won't say that you're going to finish top four. I find okay, that to be strange. Right. So if Man United, if there's a Man United So it's fan, not about what I think. Well, but that's not the question I'm asking. For me, if there's a Man United fan out there that thinks they're better than Arsenal, then of course I expect him to say they're going to finish above Arsenal. And that's on that Man United fan. But I was talking about where we're going to finish and you went straight into, then where's the chest to predict you're going to come finish above us? And I said, I don't think we're better than you. So you should just be going, okay, I agree with you then, Terry. Me and you have the same opinion. So I don't understand your argument towards moi. Oh, it's not towards you. I'm saying mm, direct it to the Man United fans. Where are the, me a little bit. Where are the Man United fans' chest? That's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, um, I've seen Nobody this got season that. after season, time and time again, when the going gets tough, Arsenal... Uh, go down the drain. The going hasn't gotten tough. Uh, when <laughs> Rashford oh. disagrees, uh, <laughs> when Arsenal won um, at Palace at the start of the season, Palace dominated the ball but lost. The fact that you dominate the game doesn't mean you are a good team. Ask LVG's United. Stop being uh, a hypocrite, Jess. Well, that was the same argument you guys made to say that we were crap and tried to banter us for winning the game. Oh, bro, <laughs> so, right. bro, are you like, sick? Anyway. I, just, I just want to add to that. I didn't do that. I said Arsenal were the better team on the night, just so I didn't get put in with these other people. Uh, possession is an overrated stat. Uh, Jose won the Premier League, uh, Champions League and Premier League by compact, def being compact defensively and hitting on the counter. Ooh. Sexy football doesn't give you three points. Eric Ten Hag adapted his style. Us pet, bro. They did five Us games pet. out of six. I mean, <laughs> it's not like it's failing all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, Terry, why always just, sorry, why just talking about who's going to finish higher when the conversation is about the game and the foul is a foul every day. It's a tackle from behind is what 2020 Jess is doing that to deflect because she's upset. That's all it comes down to. She's no, very upset. because every time we won a game, it was about, so you guys think you're finishing eat in the top. Veggie, eat, you guys are, Jay, you, thought, Jay, you think you're going to win the Jay, league? Jay, no, I'm eat, doing, eat your veggie burger I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, it's getting cold. Um, spent 400 million and Arsenal still can't compete is what GK has got still to say oh, I hate these people I hate them all I hate them Arsenal listen I'm not involved in this Arsenal this will compete this is such nonsense uh, so many touches trickery in United's box abysmal um, Aaron That's true. here that one's says, true deep down uh, Gunner fans know and realise that Arsenal don't raise up against the top teams in the league yet to be seen fair enough uh, next game for Arsenal will be important. Interested to see if this, if last <laughs> year's bottling <laughs> men's will return. I don't even want to laugh. It's just, it, Adam, you being back here makes me laugh. You make me... Sorry, a, sorry. You sorry. make me a very naughty boy. Sorry, it's it's unbelievable. The Adam Charles facial expressions. A United fan here, but I agree. VAR shouldn't have got involved in it. Uh, it wasn't a clear foul, but then uh, you get some and you lose some. Thank you for being on. What does that mean? Oh, glory, glory, Man United. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Google uh, On second thoughts, it was all, it's all worth it. <laughs> 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 Only come up and forward from here. Um, a potential leg breaker on R Bruno. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. So was it was it potentially or was it? Well, potential. It's back. The studs being called. He could never. That would no, never have broken his legs. legs. No, it mm -hmm. I'm, I'm joking. Liar. Ref gave nothing. Uh, Lokonga should have seen red. Is what Richard Cox has got to say it's here. It's not even how you spell his name. It's mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> Arsenal fans are so shameless. That's why rivals come for you when you lose. Um, all right, what, Mr. About Mr. F, what about FC is what JP says here. 60% possession and lost on the counter. Fair play, United. Yeah. Uh, how much is McTominay's push a foul, but Odegaard's not? Also, why was Saka not sent off for his challenge on Malassia? What challenge? <laughs> what challenge? Oh, shut yeah. up. Do you know what made me laugh about that? When you saw, when I saw him on the foot holding his leg, I thought, uh, Malassia's caught him late. It's going to be a penalty. And then we, we, we all, you guys were like, <laughs> Jess was like, What's he done to Saka? Is he okay? I want to see the replay. And then we saw Saka just land on Malassia and the room just went, oh. <laughs> it was a very good moment. I wish you were here. Uh, the league said uh, they would be more lenient on tackles this season, but brought it back uh, to this specific incident Terry mentions on Ericsson's tackle. Again, I, I, listen, I, I do think it was soft. I, I do get people saying that it was a soft foul. I think the referee thought the ball had been won. You can't push people in the back and your knees connect them if you don't win the ball. There's no rule. That's, that, that element of saying no contact doesn't really exist. Um, yeah. Dry your eyes, your gal. Victim mentality always. 
Uh, Hashir says, I just want to remind Igao and everyone who's crying um, of Cavani's disallowed goal against Tottenham when Scott literally accidentally poked Song in the face uh, in the build-up. How do you, you accidentally poke someone in the face? If you actually go back, and, it's hard to explain. If you explain it, it sounds like, you, you know when people like explain what God is? It's like, who would believe that an invisible man lives in the sky? You get you the do. Bible, man. <laughs> yeah, anyway, that's yeah. when you explain what Scott McTominay did. It's like you're making it up, but it was an accident. That was disallowed. That's true. I remember that, but it's a conspiracy. Uh, dry your eyes, a gal, always the victim. A few of those from Mark. Uh, then why did United fans sing it? Listen, United fans are singing the Paul Tierney song to wind Arsenal fans up. It isn't serious. Leighton Orient sing the song we're by far the greatest team the world has ever seen. They're not. Football fans just sing songs, my brother. You, you think they re- you think my United fans are singing the Paul Tierney song because they they paid him before they. <laughs> Hey, come on! I mean... Hisham, I'm with you, bro. I'm <laughs> with you, it. brother. Saltiness is crazy. We had no salt for the chips earlier. We could have just waited for after the game. We'd have to be fair, salt. though, they were actually... We salt for a month. They were really well sorted. They were. They were actually they were really nice <laughs> chips <laughs> after I saying. had salt on it. Oh, my mouth is dry, bro. <laughs> Honestly, my mouth is like Mother Teresa's flip-flop. Like, Whoa. it is dry, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'd Chelsea rather have two fluke wins than no Champions League. Oh, you're getting dug out there, Adam. You're getting dug out. <laughs> <laughs> Shiver me too. Oh <laughs> All right, Terry. Tell Jess that you have um, a manager. Sorry, that you ha- that you have a manager. We don't. That's why we lose the game. Simple as that. Because he will press the ownership to do what he wants. Is what Abdullah's got to say there. That's for you, Jess. You've been told. Oh yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, if a fifty-fifty challenge near the halfway line makes VAR tell the ref to go to the screen and rule out the goal, the game is dead. Near the box, fine, but it wasn't. That's what I mean. Like, my game's gone. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> the game I knew and love is gone because that's not a foul. I can't even keep up with these. Um, In all seriousness, it's not a foul. I'm not making I can't jokes. Keep up with them. Uh, we're going to go to Jinky. Jinky's backstage. Big United fan. What are you saying, brother? Easy, guys. Jess, come on. Six world class players, but we'll finish sixth. Come on, make it make sense. Come on. Well, then where do you think you're going to finish? Hey, we'll get to that. Let's talk about the game. We'll get to that. Okay, Hold that. We'll get to that. It's all about they always keep deflecting. Just say you think deflected. you're going to make it to Hey, the top hey, hey, you've been the master it. deflector. You and the gal today. Wow. I've got to hand it to you. You should be in politics with deflecting. Oh, no. I said, Beautiful. I said Beautiful. we're going to finish in the top four. I said it with chest. She did. I said it with chest. <laughs> hey, you you're sorry in the, the seats. Game. Congratulations. Good job. You beat us on the counter. Good for nah, you. We'll, say it we'll with get, chest next time. Nah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that. I want to talk about the game because it was it was a good game of football. Um, it felt like the game was sped up to times too. Like it was just, it was a really good tempo. I thought United were class in the, in the, in the first half. And to be honest, where was, where was the real danger? But Arsenal, to be fair to them, they brought it back. They brought it back in the second half. They, they looked decent, good build up play, but they just couldn't finish their dinner. And it's, that's, that's the story of the game. And that's basically been typical of Arsenal v Man United at Old Trafford. Like, what was it Arsenal won what, 117? And, and and Arsenal fans generally thought that they were going to do something like that was that game was the epitome of Man United Arsenal. It really was. It really was like Arsenal played better football. Man United were clinical. They were there were some dark arts as well when it came to Man United. Like let's be let's be real. They they were smashing in challenges left, right, and centre. They wanted it more. They wanted it more, and Arsenal didn't want it as much. But they wanted to be pretty. So, go on, Adam. Go on, Adam. Smashing into uh, challenges. It's a very um, interesting phrase that you use there. It, it almost sounds like you're being overly aggressive and too physical, and that there should have been some but, fouls. But wasn't it? But, but, but wasn't it? You said the game's gone because it's too soft. Listen, I'm just calling out what I see from people like yourself. What, sorry. Hey, what, hey, what, what about Jinky? Mister Jinky. Hey, hang. <laughs> Hey, what about Jesus? <laughs> what about you know Jesus? I mean? Yeah, what about Jesus and the padding that he needed? The padding, bro. The if, what? Listen, if I fell from the height that he fell on and hit my head on the grass, oh I'd come on, he was bro. holding his knee. Do you know where he held it? You know where he held his head because he got Tommy just done me. He done me good. That's why. That was embarrassment. That's a sentence you don't hear. Tommy does you anyway. <laughs> nah. Did, hey, 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 did Jesus there? <laughs> All right, listen. That was a clean so, challenge. So where, it was where a clean challenge. Actually, where do you actually think that United are going to finish, though? Oh, we want to. You want to go back to that one, yeah? Yeah. You don't yeah do you not want to talk about the game? Just, uh, just not... asking some fantastic questions. Hey, wait, look, what, why, why do you want to talk about the game? Why do you not want to talk about the naivety well, and I mean, give no, a Manchester United that high line? You guys deserve the win. 
-hmm. you were you you did every the things that matter you were better in both boxes yeah. so you deserve to win we said that at the beginning people are saying that we're yeah, salty yeah, no, no, but no, no, you deserve no. to I win i haven't said that i, I haven't said think, that though. i do think that we played well and we didn't look like we didn't want it we just got done yeah. like we just got done like it just is what it is we didn't just sit there and say you know what we don't want to play but, but the most important thing at the, at the end of but, these conversations is when i hear man united fans say that they feel like they're going in the right direction and they're seeing some things you know under ten hog almost like it's something special it's really changing da 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 you have great players is i just want to know if you've updated your expectations of your team and what i'm mm. hearing is a lot of but the, 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 just tell me what you what you what you think like do you think you guys are going to finish in the top four now again you guys do have good players sancho is one of the best young players in Bro. the in in the world you have casemiro erickson is a very good player varan like let's not sit here and act like man united are a bunch of scrubs where do you think you're going to finish? Hey, we are in a very scrubby situation not so long ago. So let's not rewrite <laughs> history. Let's not, let's not rewrite history. Hey, 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 hey. Look, look, look. I'm going to address this point about the game, and then I'm going to actually answer your question. It's still okay. naive to play a high line against one of the best counter-attacking teams in the league, if not Europe, if not the world. It was mad to do that. It was mad. I, I look. I was saying, if you want to beat this Man United team, you give them the you give them the ball, you give them the ball and say you do something. Because Arsenal have the ability to counter. Let's not be let's not be saying Martin Eddie could counter, Saka can counter, Jesus can counter. So to say, oh, you know, we don't change because it's Man United, because that's that's how we play. That's just come on, that's naive. United were there for the taking. They were there for the taking, and you didn't. You played to our strengths. Simple. Can I can I just interject there? Because I think this is an interesting point because people keep saying that it's. It's naive, but it's also naive to go into a game and play a way that I feel like we're not good on the counter. I haven't seen Arsenal be good on the counter. We were when we had a bombing and we would sit deep. We just don't play that way. So we chose to play to our strengths. You played to your strengths. Your strengths were better than ours on the day. And I still I just don't agree that we should sit in a low block against Manchester United for one game. I agree. Just play play your way. If you get done, you get done like I don't. I really don't think Arsenal fans would have been excited to see us sit in a three, we three, five, been. two, and sit back. Like I just don't think so. If we had been more clinical, we would have been looking at our way of play better. It wasn't really that we like. I think it was more that we didn't finish our dinner than we had the yes, exactly. that we had the high line. And that's 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 my thing. I was just gonna say. Don't forget, yeah. during the the FA Cup run in the early days of Arteta, people were saying we're parking the bus, three at the back, playing defensive, it. negative football, and now. All of a sudden, this is what we should be doing. But you know what? It's fine. Terry, Terry has something. No, no, no. <laughs> I want to get like I want to hear Jinky's view on like like after four good games. Obviously, Jess is very desperate for Man United fans to show their asses and start to over it. So that no, if, it does, if it doesn't again, remember, Jess thinks we're the sixth best team in England, but she's, she's mm -hmm. acting like we're the, one of the best. Where do you think we're going to finish now? Have your expectations changed from four games ago? Look, we, we've addressed certain positions. We're not we're not there yet. But United, Terry, and you can probably relate to this, are a confidence team. And it's one thing I did say before, prior to the Leicester games, if that you win Leicester, and there had to be wins, not draws, wins and against Leicester and Arsenal, I actually think top four is is actually fine because of the confidence that you're going to carry. Because the difference between, I'll tell you what, the difference between United and, and Arsenal, when people will start talking about United and rating them, who have we got on the bench so far? We have Casemiro, we have Ronaldo, people who thrive under that pressure. Arsenal at this point, and when there's no pressure on Arsenal, Arsenal are a bloody good team. There's no, there's no doubts about it. Um, but when people start talking about Arsenal and expectancy comes, you do start to slightly see this unraveling. Now, we saw it we saw at the end of last season, you've built on that squad, but the same question's been asked. People are starting to look to you because Liverpool drop points, Man City drop points. You lose. You lose today. Look, you know, you're not, Arsenal aren't done. You're going to beat Everton next week. It's all going to be fine. It's all going to be rosy. But that's the reality of it. But for me, Man United, top four is fine. But that, but I have changed my expectation because at the start of the season, we were in a mess. We're in a mess. And Ten Hag, to be fair to him, has made some big, big decisions. Real big. Get Dropping Maguire, dropping Ronaldo, dropping Shaw, people like that. Yeah. Kevin McTominay, very, very big. These are ballsy moves. To play Anthony today in his debut... These are big ballsy moves. Mr. Jinx, Mr. Jinx, get to the point. You said you changed your expectations from what to what? I said I already said that top four. I said I said okay. top four earlier. Yeah. <laughs> and, and listen, I, I I 
I disagree. I think it's too early to, to predict that as of now. Jay's only rolling all right because she was just told me this privately before. She's so desperate to get me on something. It is unbelievable. And I'm just not prepared. I'm going to celebrate tonight. I'm going to be happy tonight. You're just get... not prepared to get clipped. That's it's really what it is. No. No, 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 we'll no, 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 no. I am not going. I never we'll... go on streams and lie. The, the, um, the people that run the VAR thing, they have just come out now and said that they made a mistake by disallowing West Ham's goal. So people are DMing me going, oh, you were wrong. I don't care what they say under the pressure of the media. I still think it was a foul. I don't need to be told by professionals, by you, by Adam, by Jinky, by Javern, by my dad, how to think. I have my own brain. <laughs> no, dad coming <laughs> your dad, like, anyway, I don't need to be told. I am not going to change my expectations to we will finish top four after four good games because I've seen this before. That doesn't mean I'm not happy with where we are right now. And for you to call that out, Jess, it's really disappointing because you're someone that's taught me about how the Arsenal fan base can be far too binary, too, too polarised in their thinking. It's either brilliant or it's rubbish and there's nothing in between. And right now, United have had some brilliant results. We're in some very good form. But that doesn't mean we've turned the corner because who knows how we react when something goes wrong or if we get a couple of injuries or if there's a, a player issue between Ronaldo and the manager and suddenly the Glazers side with Ronaldo and it, it causes disharmony. When you've been through what Man United have been through in the past decade, to act like everything's perfect after four games it would, be, would be silly. And I'm just not prepared to do that. So you can roll your eyes all you want. But what I have got so, for you is some tissue that everyone's been asking for. for your <laughs> oh, thank <laughs> you. And wipe those eyes. Jinky, my friend, I appreciate you coming on, mate, and having your say. I know you've waited a long, Mr. long Jinx. time, buddy. Yeah. Thank you very much, my friend. And we'll speak again like soon. Jinx. Thank you. you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to be told how to think. Um, Man United were brilliant today and they deserved the, th they deserved the three points. Arsenal did play well, though, and they're going nowhere. It's as simple as that. <laughs> um, but Arsenal are going nowhere. I, th I think Arsenal were in this top four race and I still think you'll become title contenders this year. People are going, oh, you said you were scared of Arsenal. Why? Because Arsenal could have beaten us today. Like, we, we didn't batter Arsenal off the park. We didn't rip them limb from limb. This wasn't like the 8-2 or the 6-1. This wasn't a... A performance where you, I mean, these victories in some respects feel even sweeter because it could have gone either way, right? If we'd have been 3 0 up after 20 minutes and it would have been an easy game, I'd be sitting there laughing at Arsenal. Yeah. I'm not because Arsenal are going nowhere. I'm prepared yeah. to sit there and, 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 and say that. Um, let's do some already super. Oh, we've got actually, I want to bring Alex on. Alex is backstage. Alex! Spurs fan, what are you saying now? <laughs> okay, firstly, I'm not going to come at Adam and Jess here. I'm coming for you, Terry. Honestly, you're embarrassing. You are absolutely embarrassing. You are absolutely embarrassing. You are embarrassing Manchester United fan. And the Tottenham fans that say that Arsenal are, are a good team, embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. Oh, I see, you just I don't see like Tottenham, doing. Terry. You just do not like Tottenham. That's it. Simple. You do not like Tottenham at all. Yeah? I don't mind it because I, I know my team's bang average. I was there. I was there at Wolves. By the way, um, to a gal, by the way, saying that I don't, uh, um, I'm not coming to mass reactions. I don't need to come to the to all terrorists to make myself relevant, by the way, firstly. I was at the game, Ooh, paying what? my money, paying my money. Come on, G. Every single, going to the game every single yeah. week, bro. But you know what I did after the game, after the Wolves game? What did you do? I did, I did something on my channel that Terry laughs at, by the way. Laughs at my channel, by the way. Oh, wow. When no, I, I, I mentioned my enough, channel. Yeah. yeah, Alex TXFC, the real one. Oh, Mr. Oh, come on, plug office. it. Keep yeah, plugging Mr. it. Plug office. it. Mr. Second, box office, by the way, second. yeah. Right. Right. Said, and I said, I said, I said, I said, I was Mr. Bang. I was Bang I always stop conversation when I hear a lie. I've never laughed at your YouTube channel. You have. You have. I've seen it. Well, no, I mentioned you know it. I've seen it. Oh, no. Do you know what someone's done to you, Alex? People make up... Someone's made a football terrorist troll account and watched your channel and laughed it, haven't they? That's no, not me. No, my channel no, verified. That is. Is, my ver <laughs> Hang on. is my verified tick next to my name when you see me right? No, no, no. I've seen it. When I've mentioned my neck, when I mention my channel, you laugh a little bit. I've seen it. But I don't what mind it. I don't, get, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Carry on, carry on, carry on. It's fine. Carry on. It's fine. But Terry, you just do not like Tottenham. Just just admit what's it. You do not to, like Tottenham. What's that got That's to do with today's simple. game? What? Why, why are you saying that? Why? Because, Terry, it needs to be said. I'm sorry. You why? do not like what Tottenham. I, what you do not Alex, like Alex, Manchester United like played Arsenal awesome today, bro. Man, you were about to tell about Tottenham all day long, bro. I'm when? sorry. You Manchester call United played Arsenal, sir. Why are you talking about bro, Tottenham? Bro, we did a, we did a Spurs stream yesterday. Are you, have you just woken up or something? <laughs> no, I'm not woken up, bro. I was at the game, bro. Syndrome, I was at the game. Main character syndrome. You just want people to blow smoke up Spurs. 
ASS. Yeah. Like, that's what you want. You were upset because the media and fans were saying Arsenal were good and you just couldn't see it because Spurs are average. So Arsenal have to be average. None of us no, are average. No, 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 no. Your team no, is good. Like, our team is good. Man United just, is good. Suck it up. Like, no, it's, just, we're all just, good just, teams. Just, ow, just, ow, just, ow, no. Back to you for a minute. Back to you for a minute. What have I? What have I said? I said this season. Right? <laughs> this season, I've said you're going to be a brilliant team. I said you're going to play well. I said you've got one of the best strikers in the world. I think you've got a world class manager. I just don't think you're coming in the top. What four. is going That's on? That's not hating Tottenham. That's having an opinion. You said to me on my birthday. You said you need to be a little bit optimistic. <laughs> That's what you said on my birthday. A couple of you weeks later, you said, oh, by the way, now, oh, we've got an overrated transfer window all of a sudden. Oh, it's so, on the top of my head you're now. I'm not to doing it. No, but what, what are you talking you're about? Your transfer window is overrated massively. Your own, manager, <laughs> your own manager said your transfer window is overrated. Yeah, but I believe that as well. But you said this, do This is you not believe it? Oh, you I said it. it. You said it. That's what I'm saying. You said it. That's what I'm saying to you. You said it, not me. But Alex, Alex, I heard you've had an overrated window. You agree with me, but then you said it a couple of weeks ago. You said to me, "Oh, Paratici's doing this and doing this, and he's doing this, he's doing this, he's doing this." Yes. Whoa, 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 whoa! I'm going to stop talking a second. You started your window well, and you faded. You, you were basically the equivalent of a guy. Nice flowers, he wines and dines a lady, he takes her home, starts kissing her nicely, takes her clothes off smoothly. You know, the four plays brilliant, and then you fell asleep and didn't finish the job. That's what you did. I agree with you, but you did say you said you earlier. agree with me, then how can I hate you? Talk but you said the same thing. You're the think. one that's a flip flop, though. You're the one that's a <laughs> flip flop. I'm sorry, Terry. The truth hurts. The truth the hurts. Coming from the Mr. Hurts you. Tom Scott, answer me a question. Ow, ow, ow. Answer me a question. How can I hate Tottenham? For, uh, how do I hate Tottenham based on my opinions when you think the same as me? But I've, it's, I've, I've, I've uh, gone through the Tottenham, so I know I'm Tottenham. Said I've paid good. my money every single bloody week, bruv, to, and so I know okay. I'm Tottenham, you, bruv. You, so you, I mean, to in fairness, what, do you expect me to give money to Tottenham? Like, no, it's weird. I never said you that. And me, oh, you oh, and no, me no, agree. I'll tell you what no, it is, Al. Jesse no, just said it. I know what it is, Al. You think I hate Tottenham because I'm rating how good Arsenal have looked. Yeah. That's <laughs> your insecurity. That's all it is. That's no, all that's you not are I'm so Bob, sorry man. that you... I'm so sorry. I'm so no, sorry. No, no, no. But you know what? At, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I don't really need to say that much about Arsenal. Arteta's a bad, bang average manager. That's it. Simple. That's it. Until you get a better manager in, that's it. And it's nothing against Jess. It's nothing against Jess because Jess is getting it all today. So I'm not going to have a go at you. As far as I'm concerned, I'm a, gen I'm a gentleman. I mean, I'm a gentleman. You, you can have a go at me. That's fine no, if you want no, to. No, no, it's, it's more for a gal, to be honest with you. He's the one that needs to smoke, not not you. you you're, you're actually a realistic Arsenal fan. Let's be honest, and Kesh as well. So I, I, I'm not going to have a go at you. I get that. <laughs> Listen, Alex, Alex, my old mate, I appreciate you coming on and having your say. Top, top man. Thank you very, very much in... Indeed. Um, I've still got so many super chats and I'm running out of time. What the hell? I, I, I what need the to get through these. Real, 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 I don't want to disrespect them. Uh, Terry said Arsenal will challenge for the title based on five games, but based <clears> on four <throat> games, you say that United should still be challenging. That's, a, that's actually a very good challenge. The difference is, in my opinion, I'm not basing Arsenal, my, my fear in Arsenal, on one preseason and five games. I'm basing it on their almost three year journey to get to this point. I know it's a new season, but what you've done in the past still counts it's still it's still an element so where Arsenal are now didn't happen overnight when Jurgen Klopp's team started challenging for titles that wasn't straight it didn't happen straight away it took time to build to that point so that's that's kind of where I'm coming from with that my friend but very very good challenge uh nobody can win the Champions League by fluke ask Arsenal uh Arsenal uh, idiots to dream yeah, they're rattled by that. Uh, a lot of Man United fans were expecting a full rebuild this transfer window, as Ragnick recommended before being fired and following uh, last re results uh, season's results. How is this even being disputed? Exactly. The, the same people saying that our squad was crap, dead, overrated players, spent money on the wrong people, no balance to the squad. They will now change the narrative to actually Man United are really good and then try and apply extra pressure because they all predicted sixth and seventh and eighth. We had uh, Boovy on our on our preseason uh, live event who said we'd be lucky to finish in the top 10. What you'll see happen if Man United do make fourth is all these same content craze at the end of the season. We'll go, ah, we all knew they were going to be that good, really. They, they, they don't. They don't. Charlatans. Charlatans, a lot of them. Big up, Boovy. Um, 
Arsenal fan here says, Jess, uh, they are right. You can't protect you can't protect pressure like this. Despite uh, the loss, I'm happy with the performance. We're making top four. Come on, you gooners. Uh, please hand over some tissues to, to Jess. Uh, we've done that, my friend. Thank you. Uh, Will Smith says United still first month. Oh, he's talking about me. Am I? No. I don't, I don't know. Who's Will Smith? I thought it was going to be about the mouth. I don't know. I'm a slap. No, I'm joking. Um, where's that gone? Ke oh, Cam. Ah, oh, right, right, right. Okay, I get you there. Sorry, that took that. I was about to put another super chat. I lost it now. <laughs> what happened? Um, also, Jess. Oh, there we go. Uh, Jess, I'm a United fan. I'll say it. United will make top four. This is an open league. City and Tottenham have dropped points. Liverpool look really sus. We have a, a genuine chance to get into the top four. I well, I would it. say you have a chance of making top four. I think it's too early to com com completely say it because... Liverpool could turn it back on, but we will. At least you said it with chest. He did. Um, okay, so by your logic, Jess, you won't drop 15 points um, out of Tottenham, sorry, Liverpool, Chelsea, Spurs, United City. You're already down by three today. This is why I'm not phased by Arsenal. You've got to be realistic. So hold on. 15 points. We're not going to drop every single point. We're not going to drop all of the points at home. The issue is away from home. We made a mistake today. But no, I don't think we're going to drop all 15 points because we lost to Man United today. But that's your guys' assumption because that's what you want to happen. So, well said. Uh, Also, Jess, that question can be directed to a uh, subsection of fans. Most of us never predicted top four is what uh, JT says. Thank you, JT. Cowards. Uh, we lost to United at Old Trafford last season and still finished above them. It's one game we've played um, a, go a good game. And we got caught. It is what it is. I think it's a very fair point you raised there, my friend. Uh, top four said. Uh, top four said with chess, we will only get better. We have players now who are on it. I see Ten Hag's brain. This guy is not to be played with. Is what Ghost has got to say. Mm. Uh, Terry, uh, will you accept the hate when United lose future games uh, that you and other fans <laughs> were doing now? Remember, you struggle against lower teams. Um, bruv, I've been on social media longer than 99% of most content creators. I get hate every day. I get abusive DMs every day. I get death threats every day. I get nasty pejorative oh, being man. said. I'll be here, bro, because none of these people phase me. Uh, but thank you for the super chat. Uh, does Jess think they are good enough to bench... Sorry, to bench... A, Have a good enough to, bench. Sorry, a good enough bench to compete in both the Europa League and Premier League this season. Personally, I think their bench is <laughs> rough. Yes, I do. I've, I've said this many times that our bench is nowhere near the same that it was last season. It's definitely not the best bench that you can possibly have, but yeah, we have more depth than we did last season. And Vieira looked damn good off the bench today. I'm happy to see what he, what he can do. He's a part of our, our depth. So yeah, I think so. I think we're fine. Uh, this super chat says Jess, AKA I hate Chelsea. Well, we will finish above you because we have a bet. We have better players and a better manager. I don't even think you said anything against I Chelsea. never even yeah. said a thing about Chelsea. That, that was me. <laughs> Um, Jess, the fans um, are talking because uh, your historically smaller team like Spurs who will get cocky and hold the L and held the L, uh, you're still uh, uh, still better form and further into your projects is what Bruce Wayne has got to say. We are we're not like Spurs. We actually have trophies in the Premier League era. Like we're not like Spurs in our worst ever period. We still have more trophies than they do. So we're not a small club. Like that's actually a fallacy. Yeah, Bruce yeah. Wayne. Um, did we not troll Spurs about where they would finish last season? Stop deflecting. We were poor um, and our subs and tactics were naive is what L's got to say. Um, beating all the teams I've said is doable. I'll, dr I'll, you'll drop because of the Europa League. That's why it's hard. I know as a Chelsea fan, winning it and keeping the Premier League form is hard. Plus being in Europa League isn't Easy is what Nav's got to say. Mm -hmm. uh, Arsenal fan, uh, just look at the positive. <laughs> We're still top because we gave ourselves a cushion with our five wins onwards and upwards. I think Prince, uh, you make you make a good, a, a very very good point there. Uh, you really really do. Uh, man moving like Yaya Torre about his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, once again, Arteta got exposed when he faced a world class manager. Hope you have fire extinguishers uh, for Jess. No, I'm good. We're still top of the league. It's not the end of the world. And again, we faced top class managers before, and Arteta has actually beat some of them before. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Hey. Uh, next comment here. Um, sorry, I'm just getting the salt off my hands. Um, this 
I just don't understand this whole fan thing. Needs, uh, needs, <laughs> needs an apple pie to vent his frustrations. I'm going to actually, I didn't watch it last night, but I'm going to watch it tonight. Uh, Arsenal is still Arsenal. They will finish top 100. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then don't laugh at that. Um, I've got a few more calls to take and get in uh, very, very quickly. First, Jason, you've been waiting forever. What are you saying, Jason? Big Arsenal fan. What are you saying, bro? Yo, um... Let me just mute that, because that's music. We'll get a copyright strike. Man's at a wedding, bruv. You're at a wedding. No, no, no. I'm not a wedding. I'm at, I'm, I'm at the pub, but it's all good. I'm surrounded by... Hold on. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just surrounded by United fans. That's the whole thing. It's peak. I can't lie. It's peak. What are you saying, bro? Tell me what you're saying. Tell me what you're saying. Yeah, honestly, it's been a... Uh, uh, I'm no you dog, okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, sorry. I'm just I'm sorry, I'm close by guy, but yeah, why not? So I just got oh, yeah. Sorry, hello oh, yeah, yeah, I'm 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 back, I'm back, I'm back. Yeah, yeah, hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, keep talking. Honestly, it was like um we played well, but on 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 a level, but I felt like United kinda of got their chances. We kinda of gave respect to the team as well. We kinda of gave respect to United, which is unacceptable. But at the same time I felt like, you know, we should have done better at the same time. We should have been, honestly, we're against Fulham and Aston Villa. We should have finished their chances. But United is a different gravy. That's the thing. On a level. I hear you. Yeah, I hear you on that, mate. I really, really do. Um, are, you, are you confident you'll bounce back from this? On a, yeah, well, obviously, we bounce back against Everton. But at the same time, like, it's unacceptable to, for, that, for that performance to happen. Like, honestly, we had that chances. We had several chances in the game to um, score goals. But at the same time, like, you know, it's not Fulham and Aston Villa, it's Manchester United. And you, Rashford took the chances and you cleared to, you basically deserve to win at the same time, yeah. you know. No, I, I agree. Jason, I know you're waiting a long time. Thank you, bro, for coming on and having your say. I really appreciate no it. Cheers. Man. Jason, so I'll let the viewers know. When I look down, I'm looking down because the monitor's there and I swear I can see everybody there in front of me. That's why I look down. I'm not down ignoring uh, what's being said. Uh, Zane is with us now. Zane, the Liverpool fan, what are you saying? <laughs> Boy, this show's been entertaining, bro. Right, I'm just going to see what I've been seeing, bro. All I've seen today, chat, get me just right. Adam coming today, wanting his flowers. Eels thinking he's been missing for time. Coming to see that, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to get my flowers. If I, yeah, yeah, look, exactly, right? And then, typical Arsenal. now. They messed him up, bro. They embarrassed him, bro. He come in just to get violated by everyone now, bro. It is peak for this brother. Be missing for time. Oh yeah, we're doing all right. I'll come in. I'll come and tell. Yeah, yeah, I'll come in. Nah, violated. <laughs> violated, bro. And that's what I'm seeing, bro. So chat, you know, you know what I'm saying. And Jess, man, do you want some fries with that salt? Because and if you don't see it, the whole chat is seeing the, the saltiness from you, bro. The way you're talking. About your team now, deflecting. And do you know what? I'm finding it's quite funny. This is what I'm seeing. The reason why you don't like the comparison about Man United just starting their rebuild now is because it exposes your shit manager. Your manager's <laughs> had three years. Three years on his rebuild. Over 500 million or whatever he spent, right? What's he got? Eight, eight, and then fifth. You lot are shook now because <laughs> Man United... Got a proper manager in, and already he's all slapping you up. It was embarrassing, bro. And that's what you lot are shook at. That's why you don't want the conversation about Man United and Rebo because it exposes. Hang on a minute, they're doing that good after a couple of months. What the hell have been Arsenal doing? Because tell me now, right? Any man in the chat, name one Premier League manager can get away with not being sat for coming eighth, eighth, and fifth, brother. I ahead of one. I don't know what this brother's got. He's got the nudes or some people, bro. But this, <laughs> this guy, bro, how is he not being sacked? And it's all good. It's all good because all you Arsenal fans chat your noise, make yourself foolish. And I, I, I just wait because I told you last week, I said, you lot will not win the title. You're just competing for top four. And now you've been exposed. It's humbled. All you Arsenal fans, bro. Where's the top title win. chatting now, bro? Nobody said we're going to finish. Gonna like, win the even on test. that same stream, I said, we're not going to fight for the title. But then you come in saying that uh, Arsenal oh, oh, no, fans no, no, have no, said no, that they're going to fight for the title. Uh, you said you were going to win it. I heard you. Yeah, oh, no, you didn't. I did. I heard it. I agree, Jane. She said it. You absolutely didn't. Definitely said it. Definitely didn't. I enjoyed it. Uh, Zane, I, I know you waited a long, long time, mate. I really do appreciate you coming on and having your say. Top, top man. Thank you very much indeed. 
Prime's also backstage. One more. Listen, this is oh, a two-hour no. show. Biggest, longest match reaction ever. Uh, please make sure you've smashed that like button for us, please. Let's get it past 2,000 likes. Prime is here. What are you Not saying, mate? Prime. Uh, hey, Adam. I haven't seen you in like a while. Let's, let's not do that, please. Um, yeah. The disrespect United have got during preseason and even during the season as well from rivals and from their own fans is quite wild. Like, can people not see the quality that's within this United team? Ten Hag, he's not a world-class manager, but he is a good coach. And he can get something from these players. I personally have put them in this top four conversation. I think they're going to finish fifth and they'll have a really good Europa League run. Is, like, is the, uh, Ten Hag better yeah. than Tuchel? No. Why? Oh, okay. I'm just I, don't know what Tuchel, I don't know what Tuchel has to do with anything, but whatever. Um, but yeah, He's like... Yeah, but well, I'm here talking about United. Fair enough. The, the United Arsenal game. Should I not talk about that? Do you want to talk about Chelsea? Go off, King. Do, do go <laughs> yeah, no, I think um, I think United are definitely in this conversation. Like the disrespect that they get is very much unwarranted. It's weird. Yeah, is that, listen, listen, I mean, there, there is, there is. I think you can predict Man United coming fifth or sixth or even seventh without being totally disrespectful. And I've, I mean, I've indulged a lot of the disrespect and just let that be the opinion that people put out there. Cause then I enjoy the mental gymnastics and the flip flop. If, if they win, if, if, if they win a few games it's, and I'm used to it my whole life, biggest team in the world, most famous team in the world. Um, definitely the biggest in England and, and the most famous in the premier league. And it winds people up. And um, there were too many Arsenal fans that probably thought they were going to come here today and completely turn us over. And as I said, in my preview, I was scared of Arsenal. They definitely could have beaten us and they played well enough to. However, there was a bit too many Arsenal fans acting like there was no threat from Man United. Not Adam and not Jess in the studio with me, both, you know, talking behind, like, before the game and during the game. And of course, Jess's previews never said that. But there is, a, there is an arrogance towards Man United that, you know, Liverpool fans said, you know, we'll score four, we'll score five, we'll score six, we'll walk through them. This isn't even a tough game anymore. You're irrelevant now. And they got, and, and they got done in. And I think that if you, st this is the problem. Fan bases are powerful and how they speak seeps into dressing rooms. And maybe just maybe when Man United played a few teams recently, everybody thought, look how easy it was for Brighton and for Brentford. We're going to do the same. And maybe just maybe the teams haven't come in with the right level of concentration. But then this can become a test because the more dangerous we get, the harder teams will try again. So it, it really becomes a, a counterbalance. And that's for the managers to to, to handle and, and deal with. But look, it's, it's going to be an intriguing one to see how it goes, mate. Um, Prime, I know you waited a long, long time. I appreciate you coming on, mate, uh, and having your say. Top man, we'll speak in the week, most likely. Um, viewers, I, I also want to make, we get more super chats. We did. Um, saying that dumb Mikel Arteta, sorry, saying that dumb Mikel Arteta beat some of the top managers when it didn't lead to anything is exactly that. It's irrelevant, so stop this bollocks, is what GK says. He beat Pep going into the FA Cup. I know. So is that nothing? Like uh, chica, you chica. guys, come on! Like Chike, um, isn't Chike a Man City fan? Top four only matters for two come more seasons. Crazy. Yeah, then it's top five. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. Who's gonna make top five? I know it's gonna be good. <laughs> um, Terry, I'm a follower of Jess. I told her a couple of weeks ago, without additional players to the squad, uh, with this manager, we would not make top four. Is what Ab. Abdullah, is that how you pronounce it? Ab Ab Abdullah, Abdullah it Barry. A, today wasn't a depth issue uh, yeah. at all. Um, I'm not with Prime on this one. If Eric Ten Hag makes uh, something of this team greater than sixth place, it will be beyond expectations. Objectivity uh, equals cowardice. Um, am I misunderstanding what he means by that? No. So you're objective. You if you're being objective, then it means that you don't want to back your team and you're you're shook to really put your your money where your mouth. Is. Yeah, I, I mean, you could definitely mean. say that. I mean, I'm definitely sure. I am. I am afraid to say on camera something I don't believe that could end up biting me in the backside because I don't mind being wrong if it's about something I believe in. But why say something you don't believe in just to maybe be wrong? It's kind of that's that's what clout chasers do. And, you know, just under a hundred thousand people have watched this show so far. I don't need to clout chase. Jeez. Just saying. Um, listen, Jeez. everyone that's tuned in uh, to the show tonight, big. Uh, we have a super chat that came in. No, that's all of them. Uh, I want to say a big thank you to everyone that's tuned in tonight. Please make sure you hit like buttons and subscribe. Adam Charles, always a pleasure to have you back in the studio. It always is, my friend. Always. Jessica Black, always an honor um, to, to, to work with you. And, of course, beating you both is um, 
a big, big pleasure of, of mine. Um, Vibes FC. So Midnight Vibes is back exclu exclusively on the Football Terrace's Twitch account. The link's in the description below. Go and watch it tonight with KJ and much, much more on there. Uh, Vibes FC podcast out tonight. Javern on uh, the text over there. Thank you very, very much indeed. Look at that. Look at the pro for the hair coming back. You know, I'm seeing it now. Nice. Get in there, bruv. No more bored Terry. Um, well, now, no, though, that, that Ten Hag's doing so well. Like, I might just copy his haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, everyone who's tuned in today, thank you. Take care. Goodbye.